set her mind at ease. Amy places her trust in the detectives at Cheaters. Amy O'Neill, age 22, a pharmaceutical salesperson who fears her boyfriend may be filling out an intimate prescription for another woman. And Neil and I met at a party at his old apartment. Um, my ex-boyfriend, now my ex-boyfriend, um, took me over there and he was a friend of Neil's, one of his co-workers, and Neil was having a party, a pre-Halloween party. And we went there and I met Neil. Well, in, the in the beginning of our relationship, we were, we were really happy. We did, we did a lot of things together. Like, um, one of those, I can't wait to see him, can't wait to see her. You know, always thinking about each other. He'd send me, I'd get, I'd get home and I'd have flowers and a card. And about every day I'd get a different card and put a big box full of cards from him. And I don't know, it was really happy. It was like a storybook, sort of. Lately, um, the I love yous and the cuddles and stuff, um, they aren't really like they used to be. You know, when, when somebody touches you and you can feel it and you can see and you can hear in their voice and they say I love you that it's authentic and they really mean it, or if it's just kind of like a shallow, you know, like peck and pat on the back and I love you, rushing out the door type thing, it's totally different. If I were to find out that he's cheating on me, I don't know, I'd, pro I'd probably be pissed. I'd be really angry. I'd definitely, um, I'd be angry because I'd feel betrayed. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Anil Saga, age 28, a computer technician who may be sharing space on his hard drive with another woman. Investigation day two. After a slow start, Cheater's persistence pays off as suspect Saga comes out of his apartment with an unknown female. seems innocent at first until she gets to her car where Mr. Saga immediately leans in for a luscious smooch. Cheaters watchdogs are immediately privy to the fact that this relationship constitutes more than mere friendship. But it's unclear just how far the deception goes. The two then head off in their separate vehicles, looking quite pleased with whatever had just taken place. Perhaps feeling a twinge of apprehension, Anil immediately picks up his cell phone to reassure his girlfriend that all is well. Investigation Day 5. Cheaters PIs keep close tabs on Mr. Saga and strike gold again when his companion, now identified as Janisa Kensler, pulls her car up next to him at his place of residence. Anil appears not to have a care in the world as he confidently strolls over to companion Kensler's car. She happily greets him with a peck on the cheek and then does a little derriere shake so as to properly close her car door. Detectives sense trouble when the two then skip inside and spend over an hour together alone. As suspect Saga sends her off on her way, Cheater's PIs debate whether to close the investigation with the extensive evidence already acquired. But they opt to stay on for a few more days. Investigation Day 9. The suspect and his companion pull up together in his truck. Cheerfully holding the keys in his mouth like a dog with a bone, he graciously lets his lady out of the car on his side of the vehicle. The playful and intimate body language between the two is undeniable. 
After giving her a provocative pat on her backside, the two then follow the same pattern as before, heading indoors for what investigators can only assume to be another afternoon quickie. Fifty minutes later, apparently done with their siesta shenanigans, they waltz back out to his truck with Saga's necktie conspicuously loosened. The muscular Saga is barely able to squeeze into the driver's seat beside companion Kanzler, but when he finally manages to pull off the feet, the two top off their day with a long and passionate kiss. Whatever satisfaction was gained earlier is apparently not enough for the insatiable Saga, as he tackles Kanzler in an aggressive and lusty manner. Without a doubt, these two are up to no good, and Cheater's watchdogs close the case, satisfied that their work is complete. After the break, the confrontation. Now that Anil's inexcusable conduct has been confirmed, cheaters must report the unspeakable news to Amy. Facing the tragic situation, Amy clings to the memory of better times. When my detectives brought me this information and I was able to view it, your boyfriend's public displays of, I should say nothing more but affection towards another woman was inappropriate, and I don't believe uh, it was right for someone that's in a committed relationship. That's why you're here right now, and that's why I'm going to show you this, and then you tell me. Well, on this day of investigation, we caught up with him at lunchtime, goes back to his house, your house, for lunch. This woman, we didn't know who she was. We didn't know when she got there. He was only in there for about an hour. When he left, she left with him. The frustrating part about this is his displays of affection, kissing her, right outside your apartment. Does that seem appropriate behavior to you? Um, let's see, it wouldn't be strange if that were me, but that's not, so yeah, it's quite yeah. inappropriate. Well, I had a problem um, with it, yeah. and I thought you would. On this day of investigation, same thing, but he went and picked her up. Now, obviously, they're not bringing any lunch in, but when he comes out, his tie is hanging down. Obviously, there's, there's been something going on inside the house. He puts her back in his truck where he sits right next to her, and this gets a little more difficult to see. There he's now kissing her. You know, he's just kind of lays on top of her in the in the truck and personally and this is outside of my house this is outside your house where you um, live okay. personally when i saw it i said yeah there is a problem we have a pattern he's having an affair with the same woman the frustrating thing is he's bringing her home to your house he's with her today okay they are getting something some food right now detective gomez talk to me Okay, well, you stay on it. Okay. Looks like she's going to be spending the night at your house tonight. We're going to have to go now. Okay. And deal with it. We'll just deal with them right now. Have you found anything at home? Anything strange that was suspicious? Well, okay, he comes home to eat lunch, but he doesn't eat lunch. Yeah, no, he hasn't been eating lunch. And like he said, he's been going over paperwork and doing this and doing that, and most likely her in the bed that we sleep in. And okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give you just a couple of seconds. Let's go. Hey. A nail. What's going on here? Um, this is a friend of mine. Uh, hi. hi, hi. I'm Tommy Graham from the TV show Cheaters. This friend of yours, we've caught you on three separate occasions spending lunch with her. Uh huh. Uh, bringing no, her okay. over to your house. Not only girlfriend, they've been living together for the last six Busted. months. Busted. Been together for a year and a half. Busted. I, I really, it's not what it looks like. 
Closed. Closed. What do you mean it's not what it looks I like? Most of the lunch in here. Living Have you guys been sleeping? You couldn't figure that one out? Um, no. I thought you were out of town. Okay, you must have the IQ God would give a dead gopher. Mm. If you couldn't figure it out. Right. Oh. She, she is my girlfriend. That's what you have to say? Gee, no, man. I know. You look a little sweaty. A little hot. Hmm? How long have you been bringing her? Times. Just a couple times. Okay, we're well, lying already. You're totally lying. Okay, yeah, I'm not lying. okay well, so the times. video camera explained that times. one. What they do? Been, they, every, they make that up. Make that up? No, not on the same days long. that long, you're having lunch you at home. At least, at least let Amy hear it. For God's sakes, man. He's sitting there Sorry. going, "Oh, we've been together two times. You've been with him two times." Is what he's saying. Definitely more than two. But. So, dude, what's up? Coming up, the conclusion. Do you love her? Oh, and the flower, that was really cute. I noticed that one. That was adorable. Yeah. Did she get her own bouquet, or just are you splitting them up now? No. <laughs> That's cute. That's real cute. When you brought her Does he send you cards? Does he send you cards you, and just write in them? And isn't he so sweet and thoughtful? Thought so. Huh? Yeah. Nifty. How's that? Yeah, I'd like to stick around. Hope y'all work out, but I'm out. See ya. Give your buddy a little friend, give her a little kiss on the cheek, something. She doesn't matter. You do. She doesn't matter. You're the one that matters to me. You gave her the same flower. I mean, so where'd you find her? The guys, the shoes, the guys. Yeah. With the guys? What guys? What? <laughs> See, I don't think we could, we could be together after this because there's so much, like, mistrust so all these and betrayal. Guys, all these guys. The guys who've never been guys before. Been I mean, they have been, but not anymore, you know? <laughs> I'm, no, 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 you, I'm not going to lick my head anymore. Can you please? Please. No, don't, okay. don't. You're gonna just totally humiliate and embarrass yourself because it's a total waste of your time. Right. I'd like to think we can at least be friends. Maybe, please. We can be more than that. Friend doesn't do that to a friend. No. Oh. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. I just decided there wasn't quite enough coke on your shirt. Thanks for leaving me out. <laughs> All right, see ya. After the confrontation, Amy seeks solace among family and friends. At the conclusion of the show, Cheaters discloses Amy's plans for the future. But next, Cheaters welcomes Dee Dee Sampson, a former suspect with a fresh take on the John Daniels case. Dee Dee Sampson, age 32. Dee Dee describes how the confrontation with John on Cheaters has altered her perceptions. When I was at the waterfall, I was very embarrassed. I, I had no idea that y'all were going to show up, and I'm, I just feel really bad. I, when y'all came around the corner, I was in shock. I didn't know what to do. And when I saw Jonathan, it just hurt me really bad. I believe you. 
I'm a Joey Greco with Cheaters. What's this, man? Well, this is... Hey, okay, man, who the hell are you? Relax, oh. relax. Who the hell relax. are you, man? Well, when, when they were fighting, I, of course I was worried about Jonathan. I mean, Mike was just a little fleeing that I had just for a short while. And, um, of course, Jonathan, I didn't want to see him fighting. And I didn't want to see Mike getting beat up, but I was really worried about Jonathan of hurting him. Well, Mike is young guy and he, he wasn't, he said he loved me, but he's, he, he does, I don't think he knows what love is. And it was just so short anyway. But with um, Jonathan, I feel like I hurt him. Why did you cheat on me, huh? Come on. We can talk about it in the car. Why? Come on, look. You don't know what love means. Why did you do this to I'm me? Sorry. No, you're not. He just doesn't ever want to do anything with me. You never want to go uh, out. Uh, you never want to do anything. The only thing I'm mad about is the cameras that were hidden in my house. Um, but, you know, like I said, I learned a lesson and Cheaters is, they help me a lot with my relationship. I don't see That's your house. Me. Who is that? Now who's huh? that? Does that look like you? Does that look familiar? And that's not your house? No? And that's not it's you? It's not my, okay. it's not me. Here, let me get a that better shot. That is you. It's my Here, twin show them sister. Next Let's go. No. no. You're going to get this. Dee Dee. How about this, Dee Dee? You how file whatever this? you want, hon, because we're through. We're finished. Well, my next relationship, I am going to be a really good girl. I'm, I'm not going to do anything without him. I'm going to share him. I'm going to share everything with him. I'm going to... I'm not going to take him for granted. I think my next relationship will be a lot better. Although initially having felt somewhat conciliatory toward her boyfriend, Amy O'Neill later changed her mind about the matter and opted to cut her losses and move on without O'Neill Saga. She said she no longer considers him either a friend or a lover. As of the airing of this show, the two still live together in their rented home, but are making preparations for a permanent separation. When contacted for comment, Anil was somewhat evasive in his answers, but he did state that he'd like to make peace with Amy, though such a development seems unlikely at this time. For her part, Janisa Kensler simply stated that the affair and her appearance on television were inconsequential and even somewhat humorous. Jennifer enlists cheaters for a thorough investigation. Jennifer Bailey, age 20, a weight person who senses that her boyfriend may be dishing out extra helpings of affection on the side. When Marty and I first met, I was, pre I was in another relationship and it was a really bad one. And when I met him, he made it me feel so much more special and made me feel loved unlike what I was in. And it was just like my soulmate meeting my soulmate. And um, he just took me away from, from that and let me stay with him and took really good care of me, made me dinner, you know, and just talked for hours and it was just great. The woman that he has a baby with, Carrie, she's called over the house. I've talked to her a couple times over the phone. Um, she's, she's real quick, polite, she doesn't say much. Uh, I've met her once when we've gone to pick up the baby and you know we didn't say any words to each other it was just you know real kind of strange and that's really all i really haven't talked to her much at all there was two or three times at night where i've woken up and he's not been there and it's like three or four in the morning you know and i don't have time to go worry about it so i go back to sleep and you know nine or ten in the morning he's there and i ask him where where were you in the middle of the night you know i went to bed with you woke up and you were not there and he says, oh, well, I had a friend call in the middle of the night and, you know, some emergency car broke down or, you know, some friend got stranded somewhere, doesn't have a car, needs a ride. And I just, I don't believe it. I know he's hiding something. I know there's something there because I've, I've seen the, the difference in the way he's been acting here in the past month or so. And I've, and I know that's not him. You know, I, I know that there's something, 
something pulling him away. I need to know the truth really bad. Um, I need to know for myself, I need to know for my heart, you know, I really, I want to know right now, I don't want to wait at all for it, and I need to know what's going on because it hurts really bad, you know, and I'm tired of feeling like this, being taken advantage of in every way, and I just need to know what's going on with him. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Marty Greenstein, age 23, an unemployed young man suspected of working the graveyard shift with his ex-girlfriend. Investigation day three. After a dry weekend, Cheaters investigators do indeed spot suspect Greenstein's ex-girlfriend, Terry Chanel, coming over to his house during lunchtime while Jennifer is off at work. Since the two have the responsibility of raising a child together, Cheaters watchdogs are initially unfazed by her otherwise suspicious appearance on site. But it strikes detectives as a bit odd when Greenstein comes out without his companion and scoots off in her car, leaving Chanel behind in the house he shares with Jennifer. He makes a quick trip up the street to pick up a few fast food munchies, taking the drive through He seems anxious to get back, and Chanel's errand boy dutifully returns home, toting her lunch in his hand. He heads inside, and the couple disappears from view of the cheater's detectives. Almost an hour passes before the couple saunters out of the residence, and cheater sleuths zoom in on a somewhat expected result, the two walking arm in arm back to her little Jetta. After escorting her to her car, Greenstein then heads back inside without further ado. Investigation Day 4. The jobless Greenstein apparently has all the time in the world to give attention to his ex-girlfriend, and while Jennifer works, he plays. Once again, the two come out wrapped up in each other after spending an hour inside Jennifer's home. They head off to a department store to do a little afternoon shopping. After picking a nice hot bikini for Chanel and some diapers for their child, the unemployed suspect proceeds to foot the bill. Due to his current lack of financial resources, Cheater's sleuths surmise that these two are having an all-expenses-paid afternoon on Jennifer's tab. Investigation Day 5. For the third straight day, Chanel comes by to visit. In what has now become an inappropriate daily violation of Jennifer's domestic space, she disappears inside for well over an hour. Meanwhile, Jennifer is once again duped by the deceptive Greenstein. Hello. Hello, sweetie. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just picking my house up a little bit. Good. Well, um, I should be out of here real early tonight. What do you got plans for tonight? Um, I don't know. I'm going to eat some Um, well, I'll probably get off about, like, 10, 30 or 11 or so. You think you're going to be home or, or what? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Cheater's P.I. is unable to see behind brick walls, try not to assume the worst, but such fears are confirmed when the two swagger out of the household. They clarify any remaining doubt about their intentions when they shamelessly lock lips in broad daylight right in front of Jennifer's neighbors. Cheater's detectives close the investigation and head back to Jennifer to let her in on the vile details. After the break, the confrontation. Now that Marty's treacherous ways are confirmed, Cheater schedules Jennifer for a briefing. Struggling to maintain her composure, Jennifer studies the surveillance. What I wanted to do, as I told you earlier, show you some footage we have let it tell the story and see how that fits with you, your life with Marty, your relationship, and what you want to do next, okay? okay? On this day of investigation, this young woman, which you recognize, I'm sure, is Carrie. Carrie. The mother of Marty's son. We caught her as we're watching your place. Didn't seem too strange. About an hour later, he walks her out to her car 
as you saw his arm around her. I don't know if you would agree with that. I'm sure if you were there, he wouldn't be having his arm around his ex-girlfriend. On this day of investigation, same routine. She comes back over. He spends an hour or so in your house. Right. All I can tell you is what I see here. Like right. I, I knew it, yeah. Is that the behavior of your boyfriend? No, it's not. The reason we're behind this restaurant is because they're inside having dinner right here. So we go in there now? Is that what you'd like to I do? I want to, yeah, I want to talk. I, want, I have some things I'd like to say before everything's said and done. Okay. Yeah, Gomez. Okay. Come down the alley and let's walk slow. Let's go. Come on this way. Okay, I got them. I got them. They're outside. What are you doing? All right. Hey, Marty. Dude. What's going on? I cannot believe this. How could you do this to me? Thought you were out how with your buddy, Marty. How could you do this Marty? to me, dude? How, how could you leave her at my house by herself in our home? Our home. What ever happened? Whatever Jim, happened between what? Uh, You're, dude, I'm sorry. It's fire and I'm tired of it. Holding hands. We have a kid together. What do you mean? I know. Expect? Well, then tell me. Tell me. Don't just do it behind my well, back like I'm a been idiot. I'm meaning to tell you. I well, just, meaning. You told me like months ago, get, like, dude. I'm no. Get, like the whole surveillance on me and like, I know. Well, that's. It? Well, I know. You would tell me. Yeah, where are they? Oh, maybe show if you told cheaters. me, maybe like, I wouldn't have had to do this. cameras and. People, Maybe what? if you would have told me, dude, I wouldn't have had gone this far in anything. I'm not that of a person to talk to, okay? I understand that you have a kid together, and that's great. Be together. But tell me, don't do this behind my back. Well, I guess you might as well tell her. What? We're having another baby. Coming up, the conclusion. What? We're having another baby. Oh my God, like. So Marty. Oh my God, like. This is your girlfriend. You've been living with her and you're just. For two years, what was that to you? Having her. Nothing? No, it was something. What? But I was with her for two years too and that was something too. And like we have a baby together. I see my baby and I see her all the time. And Don't you see how ridiculous this is? Dude, come on. You like I'd take say, me and, yeah. and make me feel so nice all the time. And then it's just what? What? Exactly. It's not anything to even be said here any more dude you didn't even you didn't even care he was living with her yeah, and you're still sleeping with he's, him he's sleeping he with her he has and then you're all in there my child so like, what does that have to do with anything it's it's not, it's to do too. With I need the to fact be, that he's I with somebody else don't you want to me, say hey what's going wouldn't on. you want him to not he be was, with her he's supposed to have been you were supposed to break up with her Hey, Marty, say so you're gonna run? You're gonna run. Now, I'll talk, but can you just get these cameras off me? I'm kind of feeling a little overwhelmed here. Yeah, I, I think you Good, should. I think you should. And then, but you can't be honest with her. You saw what she went through before. A little honesty. That's all it takes, and you gotta scrap, and you don't even care. I care. Jesus Christ. This is the father of my child. Yeah, and the father of your new child. Exactly. And he's sleeping with his girlfriend, so, and you're just going, okay, here, you can have me too? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, you can have me, but he, knew, he said he was gonna break up with her. And he's yours, you have kids together, you can have 20 babies and girls fat together. I'm sorry, Jennifer. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. You're amazing, Marty. That's it. Um, I don't care. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you have to tell me anything, but you should. I don't know. I don't know what you want to do now. No, like what? Is, what is you just why are you going honesty. to my house? A little true. What is that? Why are you the only person in my our house? Our house. It's not Carrie's house. It's our house. What? Are you in our house? He invited me. What? You're gonna leave her? You go over and have sex with she him. She might go to my her house. I'm like, so, yeah, who knows? I mean, I don't even know that far. I don't even want to know it. Where it has your stick in my house. That's pretty sick. That's what that is. I'm sorry. I don't, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, things have been rocky lately. And... 
Sorry, I'm Yeah, why have they been rocky? You've been hanging out with your ex. Yeah, you wonder why. If you would have just told me from the beginning. Yeah, I know. It was a lot. Well, good. You deserve it. Good. I don't want to talk now. It's too late. Why is there to talk about now? Well, then why do you even care? Why did you even go through all this? Because I loved him. That's why. Aaron, hello. I was only with him for two years, too. I love them, too. Good. You obviously have kids together, so. Exactly. Whatever. Exactly. So that, I'm done. I'm done. I'm so done with you too. Oh, oh, so, oh, so. Oh, oh, right. oh, 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 Hey, pal, you're going to have to grow up one of these days. You just can't keep treating people one that these way. Days, mate. Get off me, get off me, get off me, get off me. Oh, my God. And get off her, too. Please. get all the way home. What are you going to do with your house? I'm going, I'm not going home. I'm going to go somewhere else, go to a friend's house. Calm down. Oh, my God. You're going to get your I'm stuff out all of my, there? All my, all my stuff. Everything in that house is practically mine. Oh my God. Let's get, out, let's get you out of this street. No, I'm not even worried about where we're walking right now. I'm just walking. Oh my God. Just a little honesty. That's all That's he all. had to do. That's for real. That's and all. Then to, and then the saddest thing is to drag you through all that. I know. Let's go ahead. And yeah, let's go in town. I'm hearing other people. Okay. Where are you gonna go? Do you wanna go to your, uh, you gonna go back to your house or are you gonna go to your mom's, you think? I think I'm gonna go to my friend's house and let some steam out and then I'm gonna go stay with my mom tonight. Oh my. Following the confrontation, Jennifer bitterly goes on with her routine. At the end of the program, Jennifer shares her outlook on love. But first, Cheaters presents Marie Mendez, a young lady caught in the middle of a volatile situation. Marie recalls the events from the Shadell Gomberg case. Marie Mendez, age 25. Marie describes the circumstances surrounding her involvement with the suspect in the Shadell Gomberg case. At first, when I saw the vans and stuff, I didn't even, when I saw y'all come out, um, I didn't even think about cheaters. I thought about like a drug bust or police, something that had to do, you know, I knew that it didn't have to do with me. I don't have any criminal history, but I thought, you know, wait a minute, what's going on? I kind of like stopped, froze and, you know, kind of shocked because it all happened so fast. 30 days. Gotcha. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. I think you know that. Yeah. You know why we're here. Did you know he had a girlfriend that he's been living with for almost four years and he got she's a baby been with, with me? me? You've been living together with no, she's been hairs. With my mom. Okay. Do you deny that you have a child together? Just yeah, recently for maybe two months. Let me see my phone if, if Oh yeah, you the told phone that, that you don't have. Yeah, you wanna call and ask my mom? Did I tell I tell you I didn't want to be with you? So why didn't you get us go? I think that he was trying to be a player since he, you know, didn't disclose his baby's mom to me that he was in a relationship and trying to be in a relationship with me too because um, when she came out and, you know, the stuff she said and he said, she was still living with him. If you don't want to be with me, why do you keep, why are you always lying to me when I ask, when I say to you? I told you I don't want to be with you still. I told you and told you, okay? Oh yeah, like I yesterday. Told you, told you. Like yesterday when you were like telling your you telling your friend that, um, oh, I'm going to go to the movies with Chanel to, to have quality time with her. If you don't want to be with me, why are you bothering with quality time? I think that if, you know, somebody cheats on you once, they'll cheat on you twice. So I just hope she learns from the situation because obviously she hired she went through cheaters to find out and I just hope that you know she, you know maybe it hurt her to find out and she had to have proof to catch him or else he was probably one of those people that will deny deny till you have proof I just hope that she learns from it you, you can't be proud that you were deceiving you. You it doesn't bother you that you've no. been deceiving her no. come on because I don't care about her see I don't believe that I don't care about her I don't believe that 
like any any guy that's with a girl is gonna stay with her for the child, even though you know. No, not every guy will do that. No, what about the before Jordan was born? When I caught you the first time with Cheryl. She left me. I think cheaters did a good thing in this case, and um, I don't have any, you know, bad feelings towards cheaters. And if I was in the situation, I would do the same thing, hire them. Reality of the situation. Michael approaches cheaters for an investigation. Michael Chance Harper, age 28 suspects his fiance and his cousin are late night carousers. How long have you been engaged? We've been engaged probably about four months now. How long have y'all been together? We've been, we've been together for about nine months and we've known each other a little bit over a year. I pretty much fell for the first time I saw her. I mean, uh, she came in and at the time I was a manager of a bar and she came in to apply for a job as a waitress. And I mean, it was just, I mean, there was just like instant electricity be between one of us. I mean, I hired her right there on the spot. And throughout the months that she was working there, you know, I mean, we, we were like instant best friends. We always went out together. I mean, we had, we had a blast together. And one day, I mean, we just spent the entire day with one another and she stayed the night over at my apartment. And I mean, that, w that was it right there. I mean, that's, that's when I finally knew that, that one day I was going to marry this girl. I didn't know when it would be, but I mean, one day it would happen. The last month and a half, uh, I've been thinking that both my cousin and my fiance have been, have been messing around behind my back. Um, there are several times where, where I'll say that I go to work, you know, and automatically the first thing she does is just turn her head towards Chris like like she's expecting him to say something you know and when we're in a room by our, uh, when we're in a room just the three of us watching TV or something like that you know I'll, with I know she doesn't think I'm looking but she like always looks over at him you know there are little glances and it's just it, it's a bad feeling but I think to myself what could happen if 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 what I'm doing is wrong you know if she's not doing this wrong, I'm looking more into it than what's actually there you know, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want this to push us away right. because, because I feel that something's going on that's not. I have to know. I mean, this, this is, it's, I can't, I can't take the wondering anymore. I mean, if it, if it comes down to finding out the truth and, and it breaking, it breaking me in two, you know, I mean, that's fine, but I need to know because it's doing it already just with suspicions. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. After the break, the confrontation. With Nikki's despicable conduct captured on tape, Cheaters hurriedly locates Michael to confirm his suspicions. Michael maintains his decorum when confronted by the shocking imagery. Uh, you look a little nervous and apprehensive, I know, about coming here tonight. No, I'm, I'm just a little worried about what I'm about to see. Well, it is troubling what I'm going to have to show you and tell you. In fact, um, your fiance has been seeing your cousin. And I have some visual evidence I'd like to show you. Um, I hate to do it this way, but I'm gonna, there's no other way to go ahead and, and present it. This was a night that uh, you came home from work. This was one of the first nights we started surveillance on them. Um, we were, you stayed home, they came out. Here they were shooting pool. Now this doesn't look incriminating, but as we, as we went further in the night, Things went a little bit farther. She leans in. She actually kisses him here. That's not really something that that typically. Um, I'm sorry, I have to show it to you this way too. Uh, a cousin would be doing with his cousin's fiance. They played pool all night here. This was another night they went 
they're here together. They were, were very, very comfortable together here. Um, you know, it wasn't even like they were trying to disguise anything. Apparently, you weren't coming out to meet them here that night. It, it gets even more graphic. I don't know if you you want to see more. Do you want me to show you some other things I have? They were actually driving your car here. And this was during the day you were at work. They are together again. We actually followed them to uh, Howard Johnson's motel down the street from where y'all are currently living. We got uh, pretty blatant footage of them again together here. I, um, they got a room and then obviously he shuts the blinds. After about 45 minutes, uh, we were still on him. He came out of the room to smoke a cigarette and then your fiance pokes her head out. She's wearing something different than what she was wearing as she went in. And at that point, they were together in the motel for a couple of hours. We've gotten so much incriminating evidence that we try to go ahead and nip this thing as quickly as we can and let you, let you see the important information. Are you all right? I need to know why, why both of them did this. Yeah. You want to confront them now? Yeah. All right, they're walking out the front door. Here we go. Here we go, Chance. Come on, Chance. Excuse me. Yo, Christopher. What the? What's the deal? Problem, man. My old lady. What's wrong with you, man? I trust you. You're my best friend, man. Dude, yeah, chill. Chris. No, that chilling. What are you? What, what's all this? The private eyes I hired to follow you two around. I've been thinking for the past month you've been sleeping together. We ain't been sleeping together. <laughs> Nick, can you explain yourself? These guys have been on the case for week. We've been doing. They watched uh, you go into a hotel. On you and, watched you come out with your Chris. shirt off. That ain't. Heather, no. dude, listen, man. When we were kids, dude, we used to do all. We ain't kids stuff. no more, Chris. Are you gonna? Do you want to marry? We ain't kids no more. Do you want to marry his best friend? You know what? I would think my best friend would have the decency to say, hey, no, gonna I'm not going to do this. Whether you're going to tell me or not, still, you have the decency to say, no, I ain't going to do this. Then you tell me. Coming up, the conclusion. You have the decency to say, no, I ain't going to do this. Then you tell me. You don't go off and do it and then tell me after the fact? Dude, you're sneaky enough to do by yourself with hiring people. You know why? Because I don't I didn't think I could trust y'all anymore. Chris, he loved her. He came to us telling us he was wanted to marry her. And he couldn't imagine in a million years that his own cousin would do this kind of thing with a woman that he loved and wanted to marry. And he said he confided into in, in I'm you. Cool, I'm doing you a favor, man. Fact is, if you made the first move, I you know. If she made the first move, and that's when you say no, and you tell me. You don't tell me after the fact. Can you fact. explain yourself? I trust you. you. We can talk about the, this ain't the place. You're engaged to him. Dude, I'm, You're engaged I'll, to him. I'll see you later, dude. Do you have anything to say about show. that? Do you love, do you love him? What the hell's up with this? you have anything to say? I mean, I mean, what, what, is it that I support us? And you and him go off to have the good time? Is that it? Is that what's going on? We talk by around these people. No, I want to talk right now. You always want to talk behind closed doors. You know, the minute we do, I end up folding. How can, how can you do that to a man that's that loves you, wants to marry you. Huh? Can you explain? Explain to him, for God's sakes. Do you want to be with him? Yes. Do you love him? Very much. Do you love him very much? Well, how about Chris? Do you love Chris? No. Then what were y'all doing? Having a good time? I Having a good time. I mean, what did I ever do? That's what You're I want to do. Home. What did I do? I'm not home because I'm trying to start the business that you encouraged me to start. 
I'm not home because I'm the one going out working 10 hours a day to support us. I'm the one that's going out working to get us out of the damn hotel and into a house to raise the family we're always talking about. And if you had, some, if you had something wrong with all the hours that I spent working, why didn't you tell me? You used, to be, you, you used to be able to tell me everything. Now anytime, I wanna, now anytime I want to talk, I have to force you into the conversation. Can you look at him with a straight, I mean, I, I, are you, do you feel sorry about that at all? Yeah, why well, don't, I can't even look at him. Do you feel sorry about it or do you feel you're sorry you got caught? No, I'm sorry about the whole thing. How long has this been going on with you two? Month, month and a half. What happened? I don't understand that. He's just never home. So, if y'all were to get married, um, and he was out working, would, how can he trust you? How can you have ask a guy to spend the rest of his life with you if he can't trust you? We're on your team. Anything, however you want to handle that, I understand. I love you very much. I never meant for any of this to happen. I didn't come on to Chris. I didn't start this. You didn't start it, but why didn't you finish it? Why didn't you put your foot down? Would you like to, um, I don't know, where do, you, where do you want to take it from here, you think? Really, I think me and her just need to sit down and talk. I have to, I, I have to, I have to find out why. Yeah, I need to see. Do you, do you think that, um, I don't know, do you, do you think you can try to mend this situation? Yeah, I don't want to lose him. You don't want to lose him? Is I that... don't want to lose you. I love you too much to lose you. Maybe you should I meet. know I've messed up. I don't want to lose you. <laughs> Would y'all... Why didn't you just talk to me? You know, that's all I ever ask you to do. Talk to me, let me know, let me in on what's going on. That's all I ever ask of you. Drive careful. With the confrontation behind him, Michael immerses himself in career aspirations. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters discovers Michael's outlook on love. But next, Cheaters welcomes Jameson Burroughs. Jameson returns to dispel the rumors that he was involved in an incestuous relationship. Jameson Burroughs, age 24. Jameson returns to discuss how he and his cousin were affected by the accusations leveled by Chase McClendon. When, when we were in the hot tub and the camera crew showed up, first of all, I thought it was totally inappropriate. I mean, I, I was, there was a private apartment complex, bath, uh, hot tub, and y'all showed up and it was just ridiculous blinding us in the middle of everything. I mean, I, I had neighbors over there who, who saw this and just said, this is completely ridiculous. From then on, they wouldn't even speak to me. All right, hang on, stay with me. Hey, stay with me, stay with me. What are you doing here? What, what are you doing here is what I want to know. Excuse me, what? How long have you been doing this with him? Doing what, hanging out? You're doing your... Cousin? His house and his You're doing your cousin. What the hell is wrong with you? Chase was always trying to uh, hurt Megan emotionally or some way or another. And I, I really think that in the long run, he was just using cheaters as a way to do this one last time before their relationship finally ended. Do you not even give a f about me? Do you even care about me in the least? Now? I don't even care anymore. This is it's either true or it's not. No. Oh, you want to take this to court? I mean, I, I never no. agreed to being. Maybe. Where are my keys? Where are your keys? Where are my keys? Give me my keys. Take them. Take them. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't need you. And We've you. We've seen it on and tape. And you. What are you doing with my girlfriend? Is this is your cousin? Cousin. That's cousin. My cousin by marriage. Uh, I'm going to school, going to college in uh, in Dallas, and I'm trying to transfer eventually my credits to New York because uh, I want to be a journalist. 
uh, I wanted, decided I wanted to be a, become a journalist when I was in jail a while back for a uh, child support payment. And uh, while in jail, I had got a lot, of a lot of time to catch up on reading, uh, a lot of time to read. And uh, at one point read uh, a book called All the President's Men by Woodward and Bernstein, which uh, really inspired me to want to become a journalist. Chance Harper somehow managed to salvage his relationship with suspect Nikki Grona. The two remain engaged, but have temporarily put the wedding on hold. Cousin Harvey broke off his relationship with Grona immediately following the confrontation and offered Chance an apology for his actions. Harvey had no explanation other than he simply lost control. Harvey has moved to South Texas to work on a ranch, hoping in a search for the truth, Hampton meets with cheaters to detail his suspicions. Hampton Ledet, age 25, suspects his girlfriend is working on another man's software. She loves to dance. She loves to go out with her friends. Right. She loves to drink. She drinks religiously. Parties. Yeah, she parties. parties. And she can yeah. drink. I mean, she's fun to be around. My friends adore her. I mean, everybody loves her. Right. I mean, they think when they see me, they look around for her. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I consider myself uh, fairly intelligent. I know what that means. I know what, you know, when somebody says they're not happy. So if she has, you know, I mean, if she's not going to tell me, then by all means, I, I mean, I, I really don't know. I don't, I don't know right now. There's a few things, the small things that would naturally bring any guy to think, hey, wait a minute. You know, no problem. Well, like, okay, there's one that's really getting to me. It's uh, she stopped wearing underwear. Really? Yeah. Now, and I don't know what that brought that on, but it just seems like it's just the same, it's going down the same road. I just didn't want to be that guy, that guy riding around late at night looking for his girlfriend, right. you know? And I just, That's you tough. know, yeah, it's because if, if she's doing something normal and I'm out there riding around doing surveillance, well, then I'm going to look like an idiot. If I'm coming home at 6 and I call her and say, hey, do you need a ride home? She's like, oh, no, I have a ride. I always have a ride. Mm -hmm. Like, there's somebody out there that's just taxiing her around. And I think, well... If she doesn't have a car, and how does she have all these rides just lined up to go wherever she needs to go? I'm curious, I'm questioning my own, you know, I'm questioning myself. I mean, am I, am I not providing, am I not doing what's, you know, what's right in, as far as, I mean, am I doing my half, you know? And if I'm not, I mean, if she's miserable, then let's talk about it. But don't ignore me, and God forbid, don't, don't, don't sleep around on me. You know, I want to know before I stick my neck out there and say, you know what? And I'll be damned if you're going to do it to me. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. After the break, the confrontation. With Elena's deviant nature exposed, Cheaters tracks down Hampton to reveal the findings. Flustered by the shocking footage, Hampton attempts to stay focused on the details of the case. I have some information for you. She has been uh, with someone else. She called you and told you that she was staying over at her mother's. Uh, that, that night, she met up with this person this is a female we come to find out that uh, she is having a relationship an affair with with this with this woman i, I know that girl i think uh, i do she told you she was going out with her friends uh we have the audio from your phone conversations with her and then this was another shot where again she was staying at her mother's Apparently she, she stayed there the last couple of nights, is what she was telling you, but when in fact uh, we caught her coming out of the condominium with her. No, it's, I never would have expected a girl. I, yeah. I didn't, uh, no, I mean, well, now what do I do? Well, I can kick a guy's ass, but I can't beat up a girl. I mean, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. Okay, now they, are to, they are together. 
And the question I have is, do you want to go through with a confrontation? Would you Hell like yes. to talk Hell to her? Hell yes. Hell yes. Hell yes. Because I know that right now she probably has no idea that I know. No, she has she no doesn't. idea that I am sitting right here watching it. No, she doesn't. It, and I can, I can sit there. I can. It's, yeah, I want to. This I, is a very strange situation, but we, they're here. They're, it's happening, and we can go over and and talk to them and ask them what's what's going on. I mean, you got some guy following them right now? Oh yeah. Do That's, they know that we're coming? No. Huh. no. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get it done. Okay. Uh, you okay? Um, no, I know, I know. As far as yeah, hostility goes, yes, I'm okay. I've got right. a cap on it. I just, yeah. I've got a lot to say and no words to say it. I don't know what I'm going to say. Yeah. Well, we're there with you. Um, you know, we don't. Violence is the wrong thing. So, well, I and just, I know you know that. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's just go, see what happens, talk to her, or, or you know, say whatever you want to do. Talk to the other person. Uh, um, and we're, we'll be out of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, so if you you know if, if you need me for anything, I'll we're going to be right there. But mm -hmm. uh, this is your time, and uh, we you came to us, and, and uh, we're just fulfilling that obligation that we that we told you when when you first called us up, and and um, was having problems, and you thought that. Uh, if we could help you. Okay, we'll, we'll turn in. Uh, it's up here, then on the left, huh? On the left. That's the best thing right there on the left. Okay, we're gonna, we'll just pull in. If they drive off, they drive off. At least she'll, she'll know, she'll know that, uh, that he knows. And then swing around. Oh. Okay, oh, hang yeah. in, hold on. Oh, yeah. Hang in there, buddy. All right. Okay. Oh boy. Open it up. Don't open the back. Here's audio. Audio. Alright. Cool. Alright. Have a talk. Can I talk to you for a second? Can I talk to you for a second? Can I talk to you for a second? Can I talk to you for a second, please? Don't yell at me. What's going on? What the hell are you doing? going on? What are you doing? What are you can't doing? tell me about this? I saw it. I saw footage of you guys kissing. Coming up, the conclusion. Can I talk to you for a second? Can I talk to you for a second, please? Don't yell at me. What's going on? What the hell are you doing? going on? What are you doing? What are you, you can't doing? tell me about this. I saw it. I saw footage of you guys kissing. What the, man? What the? No, I'm not going to calm down. No, I'm not going to calm down. Why can't you tell me about this? You wonder why I'm saying something else? Yeah. Look at the way you're acting. I don't always act like this. Look at what you're doing. This is why I'm acting like this. Why don't you be more of a man? Maybe she You know what? This is, has nothing to do with manhood. Why don't you stay the f out of it? Me stay, stay the f out of I'm, it. I'm you have nothing to do with this. Yes, I do. You're just She's an excursion. With me. You're just a little temporary excursion. Shut up. What are you, gay no, now? Are you homosexual? Us, okay? Are you homosexual now? I'm not gay. What the f I saw footage of you guys skipping the holding hands, making out. Totally making out like it was nothing. Totally out in the middle, not me. in a split, not in a room, not in a room. Can you talk to me about this in private? You have to do this. I just like found this. out about it. I just found what out about this? it. What is all this? This is just what's happening. This is what's going on. This is how I found out. Why don't you mind your own business? If you what thought you? that something was going on, why couldn't you come to me? Why did you have to do it this way? Because I didn't want to look like an idiot. Yeah, right. Lies. Why would you lie to me? I've never why lied to you. Why would you come to me about this? I've never lied to you. I've never lied to you. Why should I have to come to you about this? Why shouldn't you come to me? Hey, I've got an attraction for some dyke. I want to have a little dyke excursion. What the? Why can't I be a part of it? Am I not a human being? Are you gay now? No. 
Why can't you commit? Great, great. Why don't you mind your own business? Do you think, do you, do you if think? If she shut her mouth, I wouldn't yell at her. If she just act like she wasn't there, I wouldn't talk to her. This is between you and me, yeah, but she keeps interjecting. What am I supposed to do now? What am I supposed to wait, wait, done? Wait till y'all are done? This is ridiculous. I feel like a idiot. Why can't you tell me? Why couldn't you tell me? I'm not gonna choose. That's how you want to be. No, what do I do? That's, that's your decision. You don't want to be with me, that's fine. I'm going to be with her. How can I be with you when you were... No, I'm not going to take this. He does. I know what right. I'm going to do. I'm going to blow you off. Because right. if you can do this this easy, then it was nothing to you. Our relationship was nothing. I'll that's give you all your fine. back. Fine. If you want to give me my... I'm fine. fine. I don't care. If this is how you want to do it, that's fine. I just want you to know that you're ripping my the heart out. Back up. All right. Okay. All right. So that's it? Yeah, that's it. I don't want anything to do with her. Do you have anything to say? She wants about to be a dyke. She can be a dyke. I don't care. About this relationship? Do you treat her like... I don't treat her... I don't treat her like... I don't. Well, apparently I don't. you're not good enough... We're never around. How can I treat her like... She's always with her mother, with the phone off the hook, with some ice cream vendor girl that works in the mall. How can I treat you like... I mean, you're never around for me to treat you like, you know what, are you going to tell me that you're genetically homosexual? Yeah. I mean, is it some kind of freaky thing? Yeah, I like women, and I like, Great. is that a problem for you? That's like being genetically Catholic, okay? Okay, she's obviously not interested in you. Okay, she was, though, until you came in. You know what? I you're like disease. I twist her arm. You're a disease that breaks up relationships. I didn't make her do You know what, you're a disease. She can make okay? her own... I don't care how good you look. You look fantastic. You're right. a disease. Yeah. Right. Great. Anyway. Well, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this. Right. I'm really done. Because there's go. nothing I can do. I can't kick her. I mean, she's a girl. So. Let's go. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, a little, little worked up. But... Can I smoke? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Well. Man. Right. Uh, you know, if it was a guy, it would have been over. I mean, you, you guys would have been involved. <laughs> and, you know, it's I have all... no chance with her now. It's over. No. I mean, it really is over. No. I don't have anything against people who are homosexual. Not at all. I just feel robbed. You know, I mean, she said, hey, I want a little freaky excursion with a, with a, with a, with a girl. You know what? Fine. Yeah, I don't want to go. I don't, I'm, I'm over it. I'm, 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 I'm done with her. Following the confrontation, a seething Hampton retreats into his work. At the end of the show, Cheaters unveils what Hampton decides for his future. But next, Cheaters welcomes Chris Gideon. Chris returns to explain his actions on the night he confronted his devious girlfriend. Chris Gideon, age 29. Chris relives the emotional roller coaster he endured on the night he discovered his girlfriend Tanya's secret love affair. That particular night when we pulled up in the vans and I seen Tanya on the side of the road with another guy, I, I just had mixed mixed emotions. I mean, I'm usually a pretty cool guy, pretty laid back, but this, this Jekyll and Hyde type of personality came out me and I pretty much just, all I saw was red. What's up, T? Tanya, what the What's up? What's this? Hey, bro. What's up, dog? Hey, bro. What's up, dog? Come on, man. It's funny, too, now that I think about it, that how he was just so on the defense and he, he walks toward me or whatever. And uh, when we got into our first little altercation, he runs and grabs some flares. And, and I don't know what made me grab the fire extinguisher, I guess, because it was I was right there by the car and I, I seen it in her trunk that. Hey, I was like, hey, if you're going to play dirty, I'm going to play dirty, too. Come on. What's up, Tanya? Hey, hey. What? What? Gang, what the fuck? What the fuck? Get off. Get off. Get off. What you want to do? Chris, calm down for a second, all right? No, it's not about him, OK? This is your chance this to ask. Get this cat off me. What you walking out for? Tanya, can you explain what you're doing with this gentleman? He's with my friend. I'm. Uh huh. Just... Well, we know what's, we know what's been happening. Tiny kind of acted 
I don't know. She, I, and, and I said this that night. I mean, she acted like she didn't know me. And maybe it was because of the cameras. I probably would have done the same thing if it was the other way around. But um, never really got any closure on why, you know, why she did what she did. You know, because I pretty much got played, you know, on national television. And I was just trying to figure out why. What you lie for? Why'd you have to put me on TV? What you mean why I had to put you on TV? Because you wouldn't talk to me. This is the only reason I can get you to act right. My mom going to see this? My mom's going to see What you think, my mom had to go back to work and see, and people going to see all this? You got me out here acting a fool over this uh, glass joke right here? Oh, they crying they ain't going to work, man. I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't with all these old sob stories. Drama queen anyway. You ain't going to talk to me? You ain't going to talk to me? You ain't going to talk to me? Well, you just come get all your... By my house. I know that night I said some things, said some things out of anger uh, to her. And I mean, it was, it was, it was a tough experience, period. Uh, but, you know, love makes you do crazy things. But of her long hours online. Johnny turns to cheaters for an investigation. Johnny Navarez, age 39, suspects his girlfriend's distance as evidence of closeness with a third party. We met uh, on those singles ads. Oh, really? Yes. And uh, we met at, at one of the cafes. So you in Deep Ellum. Talked on the phone a few times. We talked on the phone and uh, we started going out. I come home and even when I'd walk in the door, I wouldn't receive a greeting or anything. She'd dart into the kitchen, uh, into the laundry room. There for a while she was insisting that she take a shower as soon as I would get home. Um, that she would take a shower. And she would immediately go take a shower um, before I even get a greeting. I would notice some names on the caller ID, and then later on I wouldn't see those particular names on the caller ID, like they had been intentionally graced. Well, she does, she continuously tells me that she's always lonely at home. And, uh, and it's because of my long hours. So it might be the loneliness. Yes, I have confronted her. Now here's the situation. I've asked her straight out if she would like to start seeing somebody else. And she denies that she doesn't want anything to do with anybody else. Tells me that under no other circumstances should I ever accuse her unless I know for a fact that she's doing that. But she's doing it right there in front of me. Right in front of me. Right in front of me. And she denies it. She told me to catch me if you can. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect insistent on remaining anonymous. Age mid-30s. A nurse suspected of scoring a secret love online. Investigation day one. Cheaters crews document the female suspect and an unidentified male companion sizing up their relationship in a men's clothing store. Initially, their actions seem innocent. But further surveillance shows just how deceptive looks can be. Later that evening, the lens of Cheater's cameras lock in on the suspect and companion dining together at a Dallas restaurant. It's later learned that the suspect may have ordered up her new romance online. Cheater's detectives discover her internet site and her hopes of meeting a Latin lover in law enforcement. Investigation day two. The character of the suspect is revealed as she and her companion hug and kiss in a public parking lot. It suddenly seems the suspect challenged Johnny for only one reason. She wants to get caught. Later that same day, the suspect is documented outside a Dallas restaurant, 
tickling the hand and apparently the fancy of her new hunk. As the two head for home, the suspect allows her new man to drive her new car, something she would never allow Johnny to do. Cheaters detectives have seen enough to call it quits on this case. After the break, the confrontation. With the treachery of his girlfriend well documented, Cheaters catches up with Johnny to report on the facts of the case. Awed by the speedy work of Cheaters investigators, Johnny maintains his decorum while considering his options. Have things changed for you? Quite considerable. Her, oh yes, quite considerable. There for a while, she was just blatantly, you know, trying to stir up trouble between us, right? Uh, just so that we can have a, a breakup, and then all of a sudden she she starts telling me that she's got religious convictions that she has to feel better about and try and correct really? because her and I are living together and we're having sex and and she just can't live this way. Uh, have you spoke to her today and did she tell you anything about what she was doing today? Well, as a matter of fact, she called up. She called me up and she told me she uh, was going to go pick up her car at the dealership and uh, that she might be a little late. Really? Well, the reason she's going to be a little late is because she is with someone now. And your suspicions came out to be they were true. One time in here, I'll show you where she said she was going to church, when in fact she was uh, uh, went and met someone that night. This was the night that she said she was going to church, when in fact she met this gentleman and uh, at a restaurant. This was outside the restaurant after they had had, had dinner. We had have surveillance footage of them on three separate occasions where they met uh, for dinner, dinner twice, and lunch a couple of times. Actually, I think it was four different occasions. My understanding is that her car is her prized possession. Yes, it is. And uh, we actually have surveillance footage of them driving. Actually, he was driving her car around. Are you okay? Yeah. I think this tells the tale. Yeah, it does. Uh, your suspicions were were indeed true. Not only uh, the fact that she met this person and has been seeing this person, basically running around on you, but uh, she's been advertising to meet people through the internet and through a local newspaper. What, what are you feeling right now? What would you say to her? Well, you have a chance, you think? I'm furious right now. I had been thinking that this could be going on just the way she's been acting, you know, for the last few months. And all this time she's been telling me uh, I'm delusional. Really? That, that I've been seeing things. Is that right? That's how she's passed it off? Exactly, you know, so. Would you want to try to work this relationship out? No, it's too late now. It's, it's absolutely too late now. That's it. All this time she's been telling me she loved me. And here she is with a, with some guy tonight. And her hands all over. And her hands all over. How'd that make you feel watching this video? Well, it hurts a lot. I don't mess around with it. I don't mess around on her. I expect the same. Obviously, it's double standard. They are together now. And if you want to go confront her, that's why we set it up and we're meeting in this parking lot. Because they're not too far from here. Would you like to talk to her and, and confront her about it and ask her, ask her why? Oh, I've got a call coming in. Let's see if this is going. They were sitting at a table on the outside patio on the, you know, the side street. And uh, 
see that on black, but he's got on a black long sleeve shirt. Y'all can come in from the back and park and walk right up beside him. We're going to go ahead and roll, roll on him. All right. Uh, let's get this done. You ready to get it done? I'm ready. All right, guys. Okay. Oh, uh, well, no, we won't. Where's the patio? Right there? What the, what the hell is going on? Who's this? What's going on? What are you doing here? You told me you're going to be picking up your... Coming up, the conclusion. Who is this? Hey man, don't worry about it. My brothers. Well, why don't you? This is none of your business. Who is this? Hey, just stay back. This is a friend of my brothers. A friend of your brothers. Yes. This is John Navarro. Hey man, it's over. Whatever. Just. Well, Fine, what? Go home. Is this another one of my delusions? Go home, man. Go home, dude. Don't worry about it. This is none of your business. Shut up. Hey, man. Hey, man. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, man. You want to talk to her, Johnny? Follow oh, that gal. It's nothing. It's nothing. Would you like to explain to him uh, what you've been doing? We have. Uh, he called me. We have video. And told me that you're seeing this guy. You're telling him why? About going places. <laughs> this brother. The thing about it is, you, you fall for all this stuff. I fall for all this stuff? Mm -hmm. So it is another one of my delusions, right? No, it's not delusions. But it's not. But if I can set something up and watch you to follow me, then I have proof that that's what you're doing. And that's what you've always done is follow me. You just set me up, right? Yeah. yeah. This was just a setup. Yeah. Because I knew you were going to. I knew you were. Yeah. This is bull. Excuse me. Because this is the way you, you know, you stalk me and don't trust me and all. I knew you'd fall for it. Of course. I was waiting. That's why I sat on the outside. Yeah, so this. No, this has been going on since before Christmas. Oh, perfect now. And I have proof. The proof you asked for. Good. You all right? It's always, it's always somebody, you know, it's, it's, it's always been somebody. She said it was a brother of her cousin or something to that effect, I don't know. Yeah. Well, like I told you, she always says that it's all in my mind. She's always said that, when in fact that's not true. She's telling me that it's all a setup. After the confrontation, Johnny begins to untangle the web of lies to which he was subjected. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters discloses how Johnny decides to proceed. But first, Cheaters presents Michael Jurgen. Michael describes his state of mind when he caught his girlfriend red-handed on Cheaters. Michael Jurgen, age 25. Intent on putting the past behind him, Michael returns to close a sad chapter in his romantic life. When we first pulled up in the vans, even though I'd saw them on the videotape earlier, I still didn't, it really didn't even hit me until we really got there and I actually saw them in person. And it just, I didn't even know what to do or what to think. It just, all of a sudden just hit me like a ton of bricks. Christina? Christina? Hey! Where'd she go? Please. What is going please. on? What is going on? Oh my God. We're, Get these cameras out of my face. I'm serious. What I'm is not joking. Wait, Michael, what the hell? Please, I'm sorry. I, I saw hey, he showed me on the. Hey, dude. Come on. Yeah. Guys, dude. Stop it. 
away from me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To be honest, I was a little hesitant at first about contacting cheaters because I felt like, you know, it was kind of spying on her. But at the same time, I, I had to know if she was or not because I had this gut feeling that just something wasn't right. So, I mean, to be honest, I really don't feel bad about, about doing that, about calling cheaters and and because I mean I like I said I probably would never have known who is that look it's a, it's a friend from school please. yeah okay just, yeah a friend a real the, yeah I saw the I saw the, the, away from the saw cameras? the footage I saw what what no, footage they showed me they've been following you they showed me what you've been doing how could you do this why couldn't you just come to me and ask me about this I don't try to put this on me yeah my whole family's gonna see this you're gonna do me on television? Meet you. you. Can come up to me you. and just ask me about Whoa, this. Oh, you. I'm sorry. What about me? Okay, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, it's all it's about you. Oh, with. yeah, it's all about you. She told me she was breaking it off. We met in class. She said, I have a boyfriend. Things are rocky. I'm going to break it off. So we started hanging out. How long had that? How long has that been? Weeks. Yeah, I don't know what, what was going on with that guy that she was there with. He, he seemed like he had some anger problems, like maybe he was roided up or something. I don't weird he you know I was just sitting there we were we were kind of talking to each other and all of a sudden I you know I see him pick up some camera guy and, and slam him on the hood of this guy's car and then when the guy gets out he tries to beat him up too I don't know maybe he has some problems but I guess she obviously saw something in him we we had something we, yeah we well, we had it, something okay, didn't okay, we? oh happened. yeah I'm it was, sorry it was great I'm yeah I'm sorry it happened we were so good that you had to run off with whoever you had to run off with the Hulk over there out of my face. Please, baby, please. Just, you guys, get out of here. Please. Get out of my face, dude. Put this on me. Don't try to put this on me. Why do you have to get all these cameras in my face? Oh. 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 Are you all right? Well, after that, after the, we confronted them at the gas station and um, Christina, Joey, and I got back in the van. She tried talking to me, apologizing, but I mean, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't want to hear or listen to anything she had to say because, quite frankly, I didn't believe her. Because, I mean, why am I supposed to believe her when I just caught her with some other guy? And she was all apologizing to me and everything, but to be honest, I mean, it was over. I didn't want to hear anything. And I can't even believe I was nice enough to even give her a ride back to her car that night. Can we just get somewhere and talk, just face to face, me and you, without, without her? Please, please go home. Please just go home. Get him. Come here, man. I don't even want you around me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did it, and there's no going back, and there's no taking it back. But there's nothing I can do about it. Well, since all this happened, it's pretty much changed my outlook on relationships. Uh, to be honest, it's kind of hard to trust other people now. Um, I, you know, I, I guess I'm ready to start going back out there, and you know looking again but uh it's gonna it's gonna take a while to actually really get over this i mean it's you know it's not easy finding you know finding out that your girlfriend's cheating on you let alone on just on tv but i'd really like to thank cheaters for helping me find out about that because I, I mean i i probably would never have found out about it if it wasn't for them helping me The suspicions Johnny Navarez had about his girlfriend seemed to test his own faith. After finding out about her, Johnny took a long look at his own life and decided to change course completely. Johnny sold his business and terminated his relationship with the suspect. He claims to have no regrets and firmly believes the lessons learned in this failed romance will make him strive for a more open, honest, and any of excuses. Taylor employs cheaters to investigate the matter. Taylor, age 24, a student who suspects she's working to support her boyfriend's extracurricular activities. I had a job first for me 
through friends? Or? Yeah, through some mutual friends. Um, it was great. We used to go out all the time. The sex was great. Um, he used to make me dinner all the time. Really? Flowers, you know, uh, call me at work. Y'all been together for how long? Two and a half years, mm -hmm. you said. Y'all lived together. Yes. How did it make you feel when y'all were together back in those early times? Oh, no doubts, no worries, you know. He made you feel pretty special. Oh, yes. He'll, you know, he'll tell me that women are pretty or whatever, but I think that's that's natural for a male. I don't, I'm really not a jealous person. Right. So. When did things start to change? How long ago? It's probably been about a month and a half, two months, roughly. Really? You yeah. saw a real change? Mm-hmm. I just, I just have these suspicions, and I'm supporting him right now, and I just, I need to know. I, actually, I found some, uh, toilet paper in the trash can in the bathroom with some lipstick on it. Wow. And it was pink, and I wear brown, so he makes up excuses, and... He goes out with his friends? Oh, all the time. All the time. So basically, he's just laying around and going out and drinking and mm -hmm. doing who knows what. Yeah. I always feel you should give him the benefit of the doubt until... Yeah. But it's gone way too far. I love him. I love him a lot. But, um... If, you know, I've just got... I gotta find out what's going on and if figure out where my life's gonna go, with him or without him. How's your heart feel right now? Um, I don't know, it hurts. A little bit heavy. A little heavy. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. After the break, the confrontation. With Derek's deplorable actions captured on video, Cheaters rushes to end Taylor's speculations. Anxious to understand her boyfriend's recent behavior, Taylor carefully reviews the surveillance. I brought you to this location. It seems obscure and a little strange. Mm -hmm. And we got our whole crew here. I wanted to show you what, what we found uh, in the investigation. In fact, uh, he has been cheating. Uh, it's, I don't know how long it's been going on. As long as we've been watching him, it is going on. I brought the footage. Would you like to see it here on the laptop? Our detectives found um, at one time, he was going to lunch with his buddy. He's at lunch here with this with this woman. Uh, do you recognize her? No. Anyway. Um, there was five separate occasions that that we we found them together, and um, here they are at, at a swimming pool. Uh, this is at your house, and they have been spending time at your house. The camera that you had at your house we have some pretty revealing footage and if you want me to show you more in depth um, here they are together in so many different occasions where he told you that uh, that he was just hanging out at the house one time actually an hour before you came home that they were together I hate to break break the news to you this way but your suspicions are true. And the reason I have you here at this location is they're together tonight, right now. <laughs> and they're they're just right over here. And oh I, my God. Are you in, uh, are you okay? Uh, are you, could we get a, does anybody have a Kleenex or anything? Okay. You all right? Um, would you like to confront them? They're together. Sweet. Um, thank you. They're together. We could, if you'd like to talk to them right now, we can go over and, and see them. They just had dinner. My detectives are with them right now and following them. Uh, let's, let's confront him. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you ready to talk to them? Yeah. What do you want to say to them? I just want to know why, you know? I, I just don't understand. 
But with this evidence, now at least you can make smart decisions on, on what, you, what you're going to do with your life. Yeah. Either you can talk to them and work it out. The sad thing is they are together, and, and so why don't we go ahead and go and confront them. Let me bring uh, my coordinator over here, and we'll see exactly where they're at. I know they're here uh, at this function, and um, let's see where they're at, and, and let's go find out the facts, okay? Uh, we're with you. Okay, don't worry about it. Whatever you want to do, we're, we're with you all the way. Okay? Go ahead and go. Excuse me. What do you think you're doing? What is this? And who's for you? For you. Hey, hey, hey. Stop. What is this? You need a girl. No, what? No, what? Is this? What? Is this? It's a friend of mine. Okay, Stop. He's with me. These guys, get these guys hey. out of here. Get hey, these let, guys out of here. Stop. Obviously, okay? Stop. You can have it. Stop. Stop. Okay, Stop. I don't want no problem. Who you are? Back off. Okay. Coming up, the conclusion. These guys, get these guys hey. out of here. Get hey, these look, guys out look, of here. Stop. Obviously, okay, Stop. you can have Stop. this. Stop. Okay, Stop. I don't want no problem. Who you are? Back off. Okay. Who, hey, no. You can have him. Who are you? He's, He's a friend of mine. Back, back okay. off. Back off. Back off. Just a friend. Okay. Just a friend. Okay. Just a friend. You want me to back off? Okay. Back off. Let's. These guys. Who are no. you? No. 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 Stop. You. 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 Okay. No. What is this? Look. You better get off me. You better get off me. Stop. No. Obviously, he's with me for a reason, okay? Yeah, no, you're a Okay, I'm not a I wanna know. Sure, what are you Do all your, do all your friends. Get out of my face, dude. No. You're gonna take my crush from me? I'm just gonna stop you from hitting me. What is going on? Let's go talk to you. We're gonna do this Get your guys out of here. Get your guys out I have, of here. I do have, have footage of evidence. Uh, I, I have give, footage. Give I saw you at the pool with her. I saw you. No. I saw you. No. Together. No, Many times. Yes, I did. Well, she yes, brought I us did. in because. I have proof. I and we have, I have proof. We have footage of you with this other one. Hey, can you explain you to her? Talk. You and I have to talk. Why? Why should I? I, I it's, you know, it's over. Yeah. I'm done. We'll go talk somewhere. We're gonna talk in front of all these people. Let's go. Come on. Come on. We'll you know what? We'll you work know it what? out. We'll work it out. I'm no, not gonna do it no, in front of these people. No, we're not gonna work it out. I'm not gonna talk in front we're of these people. We're not gonna work it out. Yeah. I'm gonna give you five minutes. Okay, let's go. Let's go. It was. I don't know what you're talking about. We do have footage you know of you, you two about. together. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. There was a camera that she had in your house. I have a camera. I have footage. I have footage. You didn't even know. Last week when you told her you were going to lunch with your buddies when in fact uh, you were with this other person. What's that? You see it. I'll get it. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk to him for a minute. I know the facts. She knows the facts. There was nobody involved. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's go. Get out of here. Oh, man. This is good. Well, he's obviously in denial. denial brother, denial. Oh, that's, yes, definitely. Oh, have you been going to dinner with her every night? No. On my, my, my no. money? No. Do you have a car here, or would you like to? Yeah, I've got a car. She's going with me. Are you okay with that? Do you want to go with him? I just, I just want to talk to him for a second. It's over. It's over. Can we go up with him? Or do you want to be alone and talk to him? Hey, what's up? 
Yeah. You can follow me to the car. No, I'm just getting over it. Let's go. All right. Um, I hope you can work it out. You know we're here to uh, help you if you, if you need any help, okay? Taylor. Derek, you don't want to talk about it? You want to explain no, the video package we have? No, I'll talk to her about it. That's what you need to know. Well, everybody else in the world said it. That's great. I hope they know. Taylor, Taylor, come on. We're going to talk about it or not. We're going to talk about it or not. We're not going to do it in an elevator. We're going to do it in a door slam. Where's your car? Upstairs. On one of the floors. Let's go. You want to hop them with you without a camera? Just get these cameras out of my face. I don't care who else comes up, but you and I are going to talk. But I don't want all the cameras and lights in my face. Come on. I'll come up with you. Tommy, want to go with you? Come on up, Billy. Come on up, Billy. No, he, he's just security. Following the confrontation, Taylor reevaluates her current living arrangements. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters discovers Taylor's plans for the future. But next, Cheaters welcomes Marsha Johnson. Marsha came to Cheaters with apprehension about her boyfriend's oath of loyalty. Marsha Johnson, age 25. Marsha returns to disclose how her actions on Cheaters have led to a newfound discipline in dating. I was so ready to get to Curtis to know exactly who this person was. Um, when we were driving into the parking lot, I was about to jump out of the van and run to him myself because I wanted him to tell me, who the hell is this girl that you have your tongue all down her throat? This this chick I just met. Get out the car. I knew this was set up from the start. Hey, you better get that camera out of my face. What you doing, Curtis? What, what you doing? All right, we ain't finna make no sense. What are you doing? Is, is this getting your business off the ground? Nah, this trash? Don't you have comments? No, that's what you look, what you look like. Talk like. After I actually confronted Curtis, I was extremely upset and hurt and surprised that he would react in such a defensive mode because he actually issued me an ultimatum as if I was the person who was doing the wrong. Yeah. What the hoe come from? I'm telling this charge. Where she come this from? All this glitter on your face. So any little hoe that just come in the store and just flaunt her boobs, just bust her boobs out of her shirt, you gonna come to the car and get some? No. Because it's gonna be a lot of females. One. Number one. Number one, it's gonna be a lot I of really trifling females. You doing this. Okay, well, you think I appreciate you in this call with her? We can handle this one or two ways. One, you can accept my apology, or two, you can just be over. Fine. And you can go your separate way and I can I'm go gone. my way. I'm gone. Well, holla, baby. You ask me, am I gonna lose a wink of sleep? Yeah, film that. The reason. Curtis requested security is because the comments that he was making before our confrontation were comments made to get under my skin and he knows better than anyone my tolerance level for you know smart remarks or any type of BS basically and he knew that when he made those comments um, there was no telling how I would react. Talking what? I'm gonna need security to protect me here. I'm gonna need security. Oh, come on, Marsha. I'm gonna need Marcia. security. What? What you I'm say? Gonna, oh, gonna, you ain't gonna lose a wink of sleep. You ain't gonna. You ain't gonna lose. Gonna need you ain't gonna lose a wink of sleep. You ain't gonna lose a wink of sleep. I ain't gonna lose a wink of sleep. He's like he gonna clown me. Damn. No, you the one doing the clown, and you in the car. No, no, no. You in the car get some. You in the car get some. No, see this one. You in the car get some. This hoe, but I'm telling you, but you in the car get some, in this hoe. That's what you said three days ago. Let me share go. Let me share go. Oh man, damn, why y'all let her do me like that, man? Marsha, no, no, that's not the answer. This wasn't the way to handle the situation. Okay, was that the way to handle the situation? Jumping in the car with the first, threw herself at you? I mean, I did make that mistake. Three weeks had passed, and I kind of put my feelings on a back burner at that time, and. After we had a conversation, 
we decided that we would try to work our relationship out and we have been working it out. We've kind of been off and on, more on than off, and we're really just taking things day for day at this time. Taylor may have been willing to talk to suspect Ringley, but she wasn't willing to take him back. Shortly after the confrontation, Taylor broke off her relationship with Ringley, believing finality was the first step to healing her wounded heart. However, Ringley wasn't so willing to let go. He continues to call Taylor, begging for another chance, and remains unemployed. The companion returned to South Texas in the support of her family. She is anxious to put the whole unfortunate experience behind her and claims to have no doubts. Crystal earnestly cries out for answers and help. Crystal Day, age 24. A musical performer concerned that her boyfriend is having trouble maintaining their exclusive relationship. He says that, you know, it was destiny that we met because we would have never, you know, known each other otherwise besides, you know, the music that we hear here and there. but. We wouldn't have known each other personally the way we do, and he always says that God sent me to him, and I'm his angel, and that, you know, he, he knew from the moment he met me that, you know, he wanted me to be his wife, and that, you know, it was just our fate to be together. He always tells me that, and in the beginning, I used to just blow him off, but then I started falling for it, and I, I mean, I believe him. Like, I mean, we would have special times that we, even if it was just going to Blockbuster and renting a DVD, we just said, okay, this is our day, we're gonna do this. And then it, that's the way it was. Now we can say, okay, this is our day, the week before and that day comes and he's like, oh, I have to go do something in the studio or I have to go do this or do that. Whereas before, if that was our set date, that was our set date. Yeah. I mean, some days I feel really sad, like when I don't talk to him. And lately I've been calling his phone and sometimes he won't answer, but before he always answered, like on the first ring. Now it'll just ring and sometimes the voicemail will pick up on the first ring right after I just called and it rang for a long time. I don't feel the same. I feel a complete change of emotion. I do still love him and everything, but it's like, I can only put up with so much, you know, I'm not a stupid person. And so I know that something is different and I want to really get to the bottom of it because I don't deserve to go through anything like that. And I don't want to feel anything other than happy, which I know that sometimes you, you feel uh, other emotions, but for the most part, I like to be happy and lately, I've been feeling less and less happy with him and with our situation. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. The Confrontation. Armed with the evidence of brazen infidelities, Cheaters contacts Crystal to divulge the results of her investigation. Resolute and determined, Crystal prepares to face the unpleasant revelations. Crystal, thanks for being here tonight. I know that when you contacted us initially, you did so because you had some concerns about what was happening in your relationship with your boyfriend of a year and a half. Right. And this is Nick, correct? Right. Okay. We've been able to gather the information that you asked us to. I'm ready to see it. Okay. On this day of the investigation, we had a detective that was outside of Nick's home. He was observed leaving, got into his car. The detective followed him to the home of another young lady. He's outside. Obviously, she's waiting for him because he doesn't go inside. She just meets him out at the car. After picking her up, he takes her to a restaurant. Oh. I mean, you could just see their, their body language. 
as they're eating. Uh, Do you recognize who that is? The person that told me about him, the friend of the friend that at, from the hip hop summit, that's who it is. I know that's who it is. I can't see it all the way, but I'm pretty sure. On this day in the investigation, the detective observed Nick at the airport. He's waiting there. The same young lady picks him up. Okay. And you can see that they embrace one another. I'm about to throw up. And they get in the car. And they're followed back to her apartment where they do both go inside. And that's where he stayed that evening. To your knowledge, Nick's out of town. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. he's in New York. All right. He had called you and said that he was going to be delayed on his return flight, didn't he? Nick is in town right now. He did return on his original flight. The last day of surveillance was just a couple of days ago. And we know that tonight, Nick is with this young lady. We can provide you with an opportunity to confront Nick face to face. Oh, yeah. And find out from his mouth what his intentions were as far as your relationship is concerned. Would you like that? I like I would like that. Okay. I'm gonna call the detective right now and see if we can find out where exactly Nick is. Ooh, man. Okay. okay. Hang on. You're gonna be all right. Tell me what you're looking at. They're at a Chinese restaurant? All right, we're headed over right now. Come with me. Yeah. Now we're almost there. Walk in the restaurant, take a right, take a left, and they're on the right-hand side. All right, all right, I see you right now. All right, okay, so at the restaurant, all right, there it is down there. All right, I got it. All right, we're coming out now. Let's go. I'm what Joey Brecker with Cheaters. You know who I am. You saw me at the Hip Hop Summit. Oh, you don't want to talk my friend about him. So what that mean? That ain't got no okay, you were the one that's supposed to have been that hooking that us up. I don't even know you. I don't even care what you have to say. Okay, I will put my head on your plate. Ladies, you better back ladies, up. You finna ladies, no, ladies, no. Ladies, I'll put no, my hand you in not, your mouth. That's what you, on, what's man. up there? And what you gonna do then? Hell. What you gonna do? I don't give a damn about you. I don't know you. Do not touch me. Coming up, the conclusion. I snitched that fake grill at your mouth. You better tell him this one. Okay. Hang on one second. Can I talk to you for a second? What's your name? What's your name? Devonna, David. what's going on? Okay. Back up. Back up. Back up. What you gonna do? Dallas 911, this is... Hello? Dallas 911, this is... This is a Chinese restaurant. I understand this is a Chinese restaurant. Did you want the police? Yes, call the police, yes. Find him, yeah, find him. Okay. Find him. Who's finding? Yeah, find him. Okay. Yeah, find him. Do you have any weapons? Where's yours? Where's yours? Where's yours? You better move! Move! Watch out, watch out. Stop, y'all. Stop. Damn. I don't fight over no fucking... What's up, man? That's what you're doing. Don't act like that, man. No, do not act like that. Some hoe ass, man. All these big, big ass people. Got me into the You's a mark, too, man. Oh, tell her ass what's up, Nick. Tell her ass what's up, Nick. You's a sellout, man. Chris, come here, man. Man, get off. Get on somewhere. Go over there with that thing. Shut your up. You want to make a money with a real 
I put you on the payroll. You my white chance. people. In. See, Dad, you ain't got no life. Jeez, I'll use a you use, use a hater. You a hater for a living. Get in the car, man. Go get in the car. Watch out, don't fight, don't do this, man. man. Quit don't call the police, okay? man. Okay, grabbing my arm. Man, Grab don't call arm. the cops, man. Just shut it down, I'm man. Switch from a lady, a star, to a pigeon, a rat. Man, Chris, come on. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah, now let me catch you on the streets. Crystal. Oh, my goodness. I'm just glad it's over with. I mean, I can't just say tomorrow I'm just gonna just go out and start meeting other people or something like that, but tomorrow is gonna be a brand new day and I'm ready for whatever my future holds. And it's not Nick. I think you've got a bright future. Yeah, thanks. After the confrontation, Crystal eagerly asserts her newfound independence. Later in the show, Cheaters discloses her present situation. But now Cheaters welcomes Dan Newberry. Dan's even temper was tested when Cheaters detectives uncovered his wife's extramarital affair. Dan Newberry, age 49. Dan returns to discuss how he was unable to manage his anger when confronted with his wife's betrayal. When I saw Steve and Josie in the car uh, making out, you know, it looked like he was about to get lucky or something in, in my car. And uh, I didn't want to talk to Joey. I didn't want to talk to Steve. I didn't want to talk to Josie. I wanted to smash them into the lake. I wanted them to be, you know, deep sixed, if you know what I mean. I mean, uh, X'd out. You can just leave the truck right here and we'll just go on foot. No, I can't help. Right, they're right there. Damn, damn, damn. Watch out, guys. Watch out. Oh, go, go. All right, come on, guys. Come on. Get over there. Come on, man, that's not why we're here. Do not put yourself in jeopardy. Just let me get at her. Steve coming in between me and Josie, uh, that was just wrong. I mean, you know, uh, what, what, what was going on was strictly between her and I and him stepping in, he ought to know, it's crazy. I mean, you know, you get in between two, two family members, you're normally gonna lose. And uh, I, I don't know what was going through his head. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters, Josie. Let him, let him go. Just let him the hell go. I don't care. Get him, guys, guys, guys. Don't stop it, please. Putting as much love and uh, resources into my relationship with Josie really ripped me apart. I mean, when I found out it was fake, I mean, the baby, I mean, the girls, uh, it, it's just, it's just really been, it's just really sucked. But, you know, um, it, overall though, I know that it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. And I feel like that, uh, that there's somebody out there for me and uh, I, I'm, I'm not gonna give up. Uh, I still believe in true love.
Crystal Day says she's quite satisfied with the final outcome of her dealings with Mr. Watkins. Crystal sees this as nothing more than a positive experience now that she knows Mr. Watkins is the wrong man for a serious relationship. Crystal states that she'll let future relationships evolve naturally and try not to force them in a particular direction. Still, Crystal affirms that a certain amount of time alone is essential. Nick Watkins admits to losing a classy lady and wishes he could turn back the hands of time. If offered a second chance, Nick said he would think twice before ever making impulsive decisions again. Although music tops his list of priorities, Nick knows that a woman with Crystal's qualities is rare and hopes to one day be lucky enough to find another woman that he can truly love. Devana Williams says that she'll need time to settle down before commenting on any specifics of the case. However, Ms. Williams doesn't hold back when it... Fred brings in cheaters for some specialized assistance. Fred Epstein, age 42. A contractor worried that his girlfriend is becoming distracted from their once blissful relationship. I had a seven year relationship with a woman that I'd known since high school. And it ended somewhat tragically. It was a very sad ending. Um, because neither one of us wanted to end, but it had to end. It just didn't work anymore. And after that, because it had been such a great and intense relationship, I sort of built a wall around me, sort of became callous. And when nice girls approached me, I, I wouldn't return it. I wouldn't give in to it. And I'd pretty much given up to the fact that I would be alone forever. I didn't think it was ever going to happen to me again. And then I met I met I saw it. It happened again. I felt that um, pitter-patter in my heart it made me see the beauty of the world around me. And it was a real eye-opener to love again and to feel things I hadn't felt in a while. There seems to be a, a, a little uh, angry reaction to some of the things that I do that I normally do that normally she wouldn't get angry with. The, the dishes after I've eaten aren't cleaned up, which usually she does. I mean, I realize I could clean them up myself, but usually she does it and I'm having to do it more. And I think it was one of those things that she did to please me. And I don't feel like she wants to do them to please me anymore. Now it's become a chore to her, like I'm work. It might mean that I'm taking it too far with her. It, it could be a, a number of reasons. It could be my own fault. But I feel as though she's reacting to me in a way that says, hmm, let me, let me rethink this relationship. And I think that if I were to be hit with the truth and the truth was there, I think I may not shed tears, but the first thing I would do is cry, and then I'd react. My reaction, I don't know. I, I can't say. Um, anger, fear, distrust, hate, um, all of them. But first, first inside I'd cry. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 36. A homemaker losing interest in her longtime relationship. Investigation day two. Cheaters tacticians examine preliminary data in the case while field agents keep a close watch on the residence Fred shares with the suspect. Informed of Fred's late work schedule, Cheaters crews remain on high alert. Following hours of inactivity, the suspect, whose identity is withheld, decides to seek out some nighttime entertainment. Departing her residence, the suspect walks through the parking lot in a somewhat agitated manner, accompanied by an unidentified gentleman who helps her into his vehicle. The pair proceeds to a fast food restaurant several miles away. Seeming a bit more relaxed, the suspect and her companion walk inside and order some burgers before picking out a cozy booth apart from the other patrons. Having finished their meals, the couple exits the restaurant and Cheaters investigators follow them back to the apartment that Fred shares with the suspect. The male companion touches the suspect in a rather suggestive manner as she escorts him inside. Many hours later, the suspect's gentleman friend hurriedly leaves the residence. Investigation Day 5. Anticipating more activity from the suspect this evening, Cheaters agents station themselves outside her residence and prepare for her companion's probable arrival. After a short wait, the male companion, who is now identified as Mark Morris, enters the scene and scurries up to her door. 
Unknown to the suspect, Fred installed hidden cameras in the apartment two days earlier while the suspect was out running errands. Companion Morris seems right at home as the two get cozy on Fred's couch. Cheater's agents look on in disbelief. Getting hot and heavy, the two move upstairs to consummate their budding relationship. Having time to conclude their activities, Companion Morris anxiously departs his lover's home after the suspect receives a phone call from Fred informing her of his unanticipated early arrival. Investigation Day 8. Cheater's agents positioned outside of the suspect's residence receive notice once again of Companion Morris's arrival. Companion Morris wastes no time. He hurries through the parking lot and straight to the suspect's apartment. The suspect peers through the window and then rushes to greet her not-so-secret lover. One thing leads to another, and the couple's lust quickly takes over. The suspect seems to delight in treacherous behavior, as heard in this recorded phone call with Fred. Cheater's agents end the investigation and prepare an intervention with Fred. Coming up, the confrontation. With the copious footage documenting Stephanie's deception, Cheater's approaches Fred to notify him of the affair. Prepared for the worst, Fred settles his bereft emotions as the crucial moment draws near. Fred, thanks for being here tonight. You're welcome. I know when you contacted the show, it was with apprehension because you were uncertain of what was going on in your relationship. Fred, the reason we're here this evening is because our detectives do have some information that you've asked us to gather. I want you to know that some of this information does have the potential to be very disturbing. This is a very difficult thing, I know. What would you like to do? I would like to know the truth. It's eating me up inside. Not knowing, I think, is a much worse pain than truth, however painful. Fred, on this evening, this gentleman arrived at your residence, picked up they got in the car, they were followed to a restaurant. After dining, Fred, they get back in the car and they head back to your home. My house? Where they go inside and spend quite some time there. It hurts. It really, really hurts. You don't know how it hurts. Oh. You know, on, on, on another night, Fred, the same gentleman is in your house. They sit down. Oh gosh, no. But not before again. long they get bored with the activities. Jeez. Oh, and this is Fred. I can't look. It's all right. That's enough. I get the gist. I know. Fred, we do know where she is tonight. And she's not at home waiting. Oh. She's with this gentleman again. Oh. They're together. Right now. Right now. We've done one thing that you've asked us to do, and that's find out the truth, Fred. But the other thing that we can do for you is provide you with an opportunity to confront yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You ready to go? All right, come with me. Yeah, what do you got? Yeah. Let me know if you get anything else. Yeah, I'll just tell him right now, and we're headed over there right now. They just, they just followed him to a bar. They're in the car, and we're headed over there, and then we're only a couple minutes up. Are you okay? Okay, we're not gonna lose them, don't worry. We have three guys that are there on location. Yeah, okay, they're in the car, but they're not doing anything. They haven't gone anywhere. Okay, I got you, I see you. All the way down. Okay, all the way down. Look for a blue Tahoe right there, right there on the left.
what's going on here. Oh my God. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Oh. What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. Oh God, no. How do you explain this? I can't. Come here. I, I... <sighs> Coming up, the conclusion. Explain this. I'm sorry. You didn't give me everything, evidently. TV camera for. Guys, you can leave. What do I do? I don't know. I know you're not doing something. Uh, did you get that? Oh, jeez. Oh. What's up, man? Get away from me. What's up? Get away from me. You alright, honey? Fred. You ain't doing it. Man, I'm taking this chick home for a long time. She's mine. What do you want to do? Where are you going? What, what do you expect me to do? Not on me. Not treat me like. I'm sorry. You going with me or not? That's what you want? That's what you like? That's what way you want to be treated? I thought you had something going I'm on. Sorry. That? He's Fred. a bum. You know he's in trouble with law. He's dumb. Problem is, I still love him. Why do you have to go around behind his back? I mean, it, if you're as tough as you say you are, you don't need to go around behind anyone's back, do you? That has nothing to do with toughness, no. He just didn't take care of his old lady, so I am. She's been calling me for, uh, I don't get into time frames or nothing, but we got something going, obviously, more than they got. The <laughs> dumpster, okay. Trash. Dumpster queen. Trash. I should have known better to mess with trash. Come on. No. I, I, I believe in you. Why didn't you tell me to the curb before? I, I believed I in trash. you. I believed okay. in you. I believed in Come you. Come on. My goal is to make someone happy. That's what I have to do to make her happy. It works. Uh-huh. So respect doesn't count. It's not included in your respect, relationship. You get it from me. And that's the way we're going to leave it? I don't know. What do you want? What do you want? Are you willing to do what I want? I want yesterday. Because today yesterday. sucks. Yesterday's gone, okay? Unless you're willing to come to a compromise. I don't know what to say. I've compromised my... No, you I've compromised no, you my haven't. life. If you compromised your... I wouldn't be in this predicament. We caught you out here in the car with another man, other than the person that you're living with for six years. Now, call me crazy, but is that his fault? No. Okay, you're making it his fault. Is he gonna take care of you? <laughs> no, I just, I mean. Get him away, I don't. No. You had to no. She ain't left with you yet, she ain't gonna leave with you, man. You, you she ain't left with you. I don't know you, don't wanna know you. You ain't no stud, you ain't nobody. Don't let him get into it. Don't yeah. work. Walk on. You think you're so hot, you think you're so great, you ain't, man. Hmm. Spend your paychecks, you know? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The bar's still open? We don't need him. We don't need him. We don't Party's need him. gone. Just go on, Mark. Say goodbye. Say good riddance. I'm so sorry, okay? We'll talk about it. Okay. We'll see what happens. Okay. Thank you. Can you even drive? Can you even drive? My heart is broken, buddy. Okay. I can't tell you how much that means to me. We'll, we'll get help, we'll, we'll, if you mean it, if you really think it's worth salvaging, I mean, I've been telling him all night, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, and right now, I don't know what to do, I just know I feel. Just give me another and chance. And I have been, um, you look pretty tonight. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just sorry you look pretty for him and not me. Me too. We'll see what happens. So we can talk about it? Yeah, we can talk about it. Okay. I wish you could have seen how upset he was when he found out what was going on. I do love him. Okay. So you were angry at him for yes. a reason. In relationships. But they're important. You, they they relationships signify are physical, emotional. Signify how important you are to me. I mean, how many okay, other yeah. women listen do to I this provide that? Get out! What's he doing? I don't know. What's happening? Get down. What do you stay down? What was that? 
Oh, somebody's funny. Very funny. Okay. You guys are all right. You guys yeah. are all right. Yeah. If both of you are willing and interested, we'll provide counseling for you. I'm willing. I'm interested. I'm sorry I stopped paying attention to you. I'm sorry Small I was so pushy in. <laughs> and needed uh, <laughs> more than <laughs> what I was letting you know, okay? Okay. Let's get help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Following the confrontation, Fred attempts to understand his girlfriend's ruthless behavior. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters discloses his choices for the months to come. But first, Cheaters presents Whitney Stevens. Whitney attempts to explain the desperation she displayed when confronting her two-timing boyfriend. Whitney Stevens, age 22. Whitney discloses how her naivete regarding men constantly has her falling for Mr. Wrong. I was mad, I was hurt. I didn't understand why this was happening, you know, and honesty plays, you know, a big part, you know, in a relationship. And I just felt like he just needed to be honest with me and we wouldn't have been going through what we were going through. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing? What is going on? I thought you were supposed to be with your friends this weekend. It was, man, it's my... Oh, who you? That's just a friend, for real, I'm telling just you. Friend, just yeah. a friend, Friend. Do all your friends have keys to your house? When he was grabbing on me, it was more out of frustration than him actually trying to get physical with me. He, you know, he didn't want, he wanted to talk to me by himself and he couldn't. So he was just a little frustrated. Man, well, well, hang on, no, you ain't getting, no, no, no. Hang on, bro, no, uh, -uh. Ooh, no. Man. Baby, look. Say yeah. You want to see it? You want to see it? Okay. Yeah, you better get your security. Grab me. Yeah, well, I don't need security. Yeah, you do need security. You know, I've about had it. My feelings were really hurt at first, but I mean, just to get everything out out in the open, that made me feel a whole lot better. And I mean, like, I couldn't believe that that's what he was really doing behind my back after all this, you know, all the years and the effort, the time that I've put into the relationships. But, you know, what's in the dark, you know, will come to light. ...up with Fred since she hates to work and wants to continue the free ride. In a few weeks, things will get back to normal, Mr. Morris comments. Fred will be off at work and I'll be back. Prince Slater, age 38. A plumber with questions about his girlfriend's commitment to their relationship. When I decided to start my own business, she was really there for me. She, uh, she really boosted my ego and my confidence by uh, just, just telling me every day that she knows I can do it. She had faith in me. You know, I was real concerned about, you know, losing everything, which we didn't have that much at first. But, you know, if we lost anything, we'd have been you know, homeless or, or hungry. Um, she, you know, every day I would go out to work and I would want to come home with a, a new accomplishment to tell her about. I intentionally make myself not think about what just happened because it, it's so non, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and then she leaves. Doesn't tell me where she's going. She's never done that. It's not like I keep her on a leash or anything. I mean, she's her own woman. Uh, we're equals, but it's just out of respect that we let each other know what we're doing, um, what's going on for dinner, what's going on before work, after work. My cell phone was horrendous because all day long she calls me at work. If nothing else, she just wants to talk to me. Now, for the last few weeks, <laughs> She hadn't called me at all. In fact, I have to call her and say, what's going on? What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, you haven't called me or anything. You don't call me at work. Well, I figured you were busy. You never cared about that before. 
I just, I have to go with my gut feeling. I just think she's messing around. You know, I just, and just all the signs are there from the intimacy to just everyday, you know, patterns. I mean, she's just, it's like she's a different person. It's like she doesn't even know me. You know, we've always been best friends. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Christine Duncan, age 40, an office manager sneaking off in search of additional love and affection. Investigation Day 3. After reviewing the facts in the case, Cheater's operatives decide to set up surveillance outside the suspect's home, which she shares with Prince. Investigators arrive on the scene and find no activity for over 24 hours. However, later in the afternoon, Cheater's PIs observe suspect Christine Duncan departing the home. Upon closer inspection, Cheater's agents witness suspect Duncan accompanying an unidentified man. Cheaters investigators pursue the pair for several miles to a local pool hall, where suspect Duncan and her unidentified companion enjoy a friendly game along with the seclusion provided by the establishment. After a few rounds of drinks and a few racks of pool, the suave companion moves in for a kiss. The eager suspect Duncan happily submits to his charms. A short time later, the two are out the door and tracked to an adult novelty store. Suspect Duncan loads up on some supplies before her impatient companion rushes her out the door. With Prince working his usual long hours, the couple head back to the empty home where they can spend a quiet evening together. Cheaters PIs wrap up the day's investigation after the couple disappear behind closed doors. Investigation Day 6. Cheaters detectives continue to monitor the activity outside Suspect Duncan's residence. Late on this evening, Cheater Surveillance observes Suspect Duncan leaving the house with her companion, now identified as Steve Mims, her roommate. With Prince out of town on a job site, the carefree couple takes advantage of the situation by planning a romantic evening. Suspect Duncan and her roommate make their way to a nearby restaurant for some country fried steak. With little regard for his friendship to Prince, companion Mims hugs and kisses Suspect Duncan all the way to the front door. Following a hearty meal, Suspect Duncan takes the initiative and returns her roommate's affection. As things begin to cool down, the two head back to the car and drive to a vacant lakeside park. Suspect Duncan and companion Mims share a kiss in the moonlight before opting to call it a night. The pair decides to get back home where their activities can be kept private, or so they think. Before leaving town, Prince secretly installs several hidden cameras to assist with the investigation. In the living room, suspect Duncan and companion Mims find it difficult to keep their hands to themselves and engage in a heavy makeout session. The couple proceeds to another area of the home, ending the day's observations. Investigation Day 8. Cheater sleuths return to suspect Duncan's home and maintain readiness. An uneventful morning ends when suspect Duncan and companion Mims suddenly depart the scene and head to a nearby donut shop. Following some coffee and conversation, the lovers refill their cups and advance to their next destination. Cheater's agents gear up for pursuit, but companion Mims' truck fails to respond. Suspect Duncan waits patiently as companion Mims works his magic on the temperamental pickup. Meantime, suspect Duncan reveals her tendency to stretch the truth in this recorded phone call with Prince. Cheater's operatives compile the findings and return to headquarters. Coming up, the confrontation. With Ms. Duncan implicated in the condemning footage, 
Cheaters contacts Prince to unveil the irrefutable evidence. Ready to end the unrest, Prince sets aside his despair to focus on the matter at hand. Prince, thanks for being here today. I know you came back early from a trip that you had helping out one of your relatives. Can you explain a little bit about well, that? Well, uh, my cousin is having an operation down by go, and I just want to make sure and be there with him. Okay. Well, I, I understand that. Prince, the reason that we had you come back when we did, our detectives have compiled some of the information that you've asked us to. Are you ready to take a look at some of that now? Let's do it. As the investigation starts, Prince, a detective was outside of your home. Chris was seen leaving with your roommate, Steve. He drives her truck. She doesn't let anybody evening. drive that truck. They stop at a pool hall. Our detective was placed inside. I know you don't That's not that. her. And you can see there, he leans and gives her a kiss. They leave the pool hall and make a pit stop at a curio shop, pick up some paraphernalia where they return to your home. Man, no way. I know that's not what you expected to see. And again on this day, Prince, she and Steve took some time off during the day, went to a coffee shop, they did return again back to your home. Now this is during the day. They settle in on the sofa. She gives them a back rub for a short time before they again retire into another room of the home. I know you must feel betrayal. You know, it's like all the time we've been together has been a lie. It's like it's all been wasted. We know that she was able to get today off because right now she's spending time with your roommate, Steve. I'm gonna call the detective right now and find out where specifically they are. Yeah, we just finished a client briefing. She didn't go to work at all, and I think they're at, they're at your house right now, and it seems like they're having some type of gathering or get together at your home. Okay. We'll just we'll head over right now and just uh, just flag us down. We'll just meet you and uh, and stage before we go in. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Looks like they're having a little party or something in the backyard. Okay, everyone's in place. Let's start moving. We'll just look for you in the street. All right. Yeah, we're almost there. I see you in the street. All right, okay. Okay, park on the right side of the street. Okay. okay, we're going around the back. Do you have a key? Hang on, stay with me. Go, 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 go. Chris, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. You need to get, get the hell out. Both of you need to pack and leave now. I mean, What's now! What's going on? Get your trap ass out of here! Let's calm down. Hey, man. Coming up, the conclusion. Yelling. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Prince. Just get the hell away. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat the hell out of you. Come on with it, boy. Just beat the hell out of you. Come on. Put it down. Let it go. 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 Don't touch me, lady. Can you explain to Prince what you've been doing with Steve behind his back? What do you think you're doing, man? I give you a place to live, I feed here. you. You're never here, dude. You just what, happened. you got lonely or what? Well, maybe. You're supposed to be my best friend, man. Don't even know. I don't Friends. know where all this is coming from, on, but, uh... You ain't gonna play this game with me. You're gonna get your... 
Get the hell out. Chris, to Jimmy's house. look what I have to show you. I'm gonna give you we all have tonight. videotape, you, you and out, Steve. Do it this all is on the, the sofa. Make sure you do it in every room in the house. In Prince's home. Can you explain that? my dog. I've seen it all. Please, honey. That supposed to be special. You threw it away. You threw your whole life away. No, I didn't. Can you explain how this happened? Because here's someone who went out of their way to give you a hand, to help you out. Right, that's okay. Right, that's Got right. you out of jail. He's my friend. Okay. But can you explain this? You know what? I wanted to bring him in our home in the first place. You know. No, you want you have to. <gasps> if I I'm not doing this with you. Look. You wanted this conversation. It was a mutual agreement to help this man out. This man goes way back with and, me. And you got leave all the time, go to work, go go out of town, and leave me to handle things. I gotta get away from you. You're you as make much at fault as I am. You make me sick. You're as much at fault as I am. It's your friend. You know what, Steve? You're not even worth it, man. You just ain't worth it, dude. Anybody that could betray their best friend like that. Man, you just you weren't here all the time. She needs love. And I needed it too. If Steve needs to leave, he needs to leave. But uh, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I, I need to get out of here. Okay, I just need to go. Do you have anything? Why don't you take a couple of things? Coming through. We're just going to get a couple of things. You're lucky. Okay. You stink. Excuse me. It's over. It's over. So just... Yeah, I just need a shirt, I guess. So... I'm glad you find it funny. <laughs> Oh, by the way, sweetie, you see who's the big man this time. Yeah. Y'all got all you wanted. <laughs> Especially y'all were with me. I don't know what I would have done if I were by myself. I would have lost control. I, well, I we're guess. glad that didn't happen. And I'm glad we took the precautions that we did to ensure that you didn't make a decision that was improprietous right now. Following the confrontation, Prince contacts the authorities to remove Christine from his home. At the end of the show, Cheaters reports on how Prince decides to move forward. But now, please meet Nora Sanchez. Nora discusses the humiliation she suffered when confronted by her lover's wife. Nora Sanchez, age 32. Nora grants cheaters an exclusive interview to clear the air about her involvement with a married man. We came out, I was getting in the car, uh, Antonio got on the other side and we got in the car and we just heard vans pulling up um, and people coming from everywhere. Hello, oh. I'm Joey Greco. Secret. I'm Joey Greco from Cheaters. Tú sabes porque estuviste en mi casa. ¿Cuándo? Las veces que te ha llevado. Este es mi esposo. So you are a Chicana, right? He's married in my country. He has two kids. He never divorced from her. And he's married with me here, and, I, and now he's cheating on me because he told me that he's a Chicana over there asking for. I believed he was single because he had told me he was single. He told me he didn't have any kids. And also I had talked several times to his friends and they also said that he was single and no kids. Uh, get out of my car, get out of my car. Believe me. You didn't tell me you were married. What is that? What is that? What? Yeah, he has to get this girl. You need my phone number? I can tell you everything. I live here with my daughter by myself. I didn't know you were married. You know, and he's taking all my money. I am in bankruptcy because of him. I didn't know. You know, he's gonna look for you later and he's gonna try to combine you because he brought another girl from my country and he threw her away because he came to me. And he has a wife in, in Bolivia, my country, and two kids. Ms. Aguilera, I'm so sorry that this came to an end like this. If I would have knew from the beginning, I wouldn't have been with your husband. I don't know how much pain you went through, but I am so sorry.
Ready for a fresh start, Prince Slater wastes little time in ridding his home of any and all reminders of Ms. Duncan. In due time, Prince says that he'll rejoin the dating scene, but only after spending several months with no one but his beloved canine. Now that Ms. Duncan is out of his life, he insists that his physical well-being, along with his self-esteem, will greatly improve. With this in mind, Prince plans to follow his doctor's orders and begin a regular exercise regimen. Christine Duncan admits that she really messed up a good relationship that for many years operated without a hitch. Summing up her feelings, Ms. Duncan says she misses the intimacy that once existed in her relationship with Prince and just latched on to the closest person willing to offer attention. She admits her fling with Mr. Mims was only to make up for Prince's limited displays of affection. Ms. Duncan has decided to accept Mr. Mims' offer to share an apartment after realizing Prince will never forgive her actions. Steve Mims says that he and Prince were never really good friends. Despite Prince's claim that the two were close, Mr. Mims counters by saying they were merely acquaintances. Although Mr. Mims appreciates Prince's hospitality, he shows little remorse for sleeping with Ms. Duncan and is glad to be getting away from a guy Mims. Veronica enlists cheaters for assistance. Veronica Castillo, age 36. An auto parts courier worried that her boyfriend has forgotten his oath to remain loyal. The only thing I ask him is to be honest with me. And that's what he asked me, to be honest with him. No, he knows every step I do. But like I told him, be honest with me, let me know what's going on, and I wouldn't think wrong. I can ask him something and he'll get mad, or I can call him, sometimes he's not even at home anymore. And it's always, I, I gotta go take stuff to my babies. I mean, I'm, I don't say nothing. I mean, it's not nothing that, that it bothers me because I know it's his kids, but he spends more time now than what he did before. Sometimes I, I wonder, because of the hours that he goes in, I wonder if it's not, if he's doing that just, just so that way he'll have a, a motive to say, you know, I couldn't call you or I couldn't go over. No, sometimes I wonder if that's what he's doing. But I'm, you know, like I said, I'm not for sure. I'm, I can't be for sure until I really find out what's going on. I really don't know what, what he thinks that our commitment is, but, you know, I, I really fell in love with him. It was because of the way he was when we first met. And honestly, I would just like to know what really is going on or what really he wants. You know, I don't want to be played with like that. I really don't. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Raymond Garcia, age 32, a construction worker with faulty foundations in his relationships. Investigation day five. Cheaters agents notice little activity outside the home of the suspect and choose to rely on mobile surveillance, which leads investigators to an unknown residence. Following an extended visit to this home, Cheaters agents catch a glimpse of suspect Raymond Garcia as he emerges from one of the apartment buildings. The situation escalates as suspect Garcia holds hands with an unidentified woman accompanying him toward his vehicle. Cheaters investigators know that the evidence is sufficient to present to Veronica. After the break, the confrontation. Finding that Raymond no longer values his commitment, Cheaters presents Veronica with the facts of the case. Preparing for the worst, Veronica remains steadfast in her search for certainty. Veronica, thanks for being here tonight. Our detectives 
have been able to gather some of the information that you requested. Are you ready to take a look at some of that? Yes. On this particular day, Raymond was followed to a residence and he was observed leaving, holding hands with another young woman. As they walk over to his car to leave, you can see by the body language. And that's his ex. So you recognize this yeah. woman as his, as his former girlfriend? Yeah, I do. They embrace, share a kiss. On this day, we had a detective stationed outside of the same residence. Raymond showed up again. The two of them exit with the child, get into the car. They stop at a gas station, get some refreshments. They return to the home where everyone goes inside. As he leaves, he again shares an intimate moment with the young lady before hugging his child and again leaving for the day. Now, I don't know what particular days that this happened on, but is, is he usually available on weekends? No. Okay. One of the reasons that we have you here this evening, Veronica, is that we did want you to see this information. The other reason that we have you here is we know that Raymond is again with this young lady. And we can provide you with an opportunity to confront him and find out why he's been misleading you the way he has. Would you like to ask him those questions? Yes, I would. Okay. I'm gonna check with the detective right now. Uh, we just finished up the second interview. What do you have? They're together and they're at a country western bar that's not far from the home of this young lady. Okay, all right. We're gonna load up and start heading over in that direction. All right. Are you ready to go? Ready. At this point, they're inside. They've been there for about an hour and a half. They're in the back playing pool. I think we're gonna have to go inside. Are you okay with that? Okay, you're not alone. Okay, all these people are here behind you. Would like that. That's how it works. That's it. We know that he's been seeing you more recently. Yes. He okay, has. so you got back together? Yes. Okay. Let me tell you why he told me. He told me that the reason that y'all weren't with each other was because y'all were always fighting. And That's this is why. why, right? Tell her this is why. Oh, so I'm not the first you one? Everybody else is Pat. You know that? But Raymond, you can come have on. You can't be proud of that. Oh no, you can have him. No, take no, him. By you. all means, take him. You can have him. You can take keep him. Because he comes begging. But you know what? I want all you. 
out tomorrow. No problem. I'll come. Oh, you there. know what? Right as soon as you, whatever. Oh no! You can take no. it out. I don't need nothing of yours there. Oh, nothing. Raymond, is there a reason why you you'd lie to this woman? Just tell what I tell her. You just lie because you lie. Come on. I mean, that's my kid's mom. Right, and no one's no one's arguing the fact. I mean, we applaud that that you're being responsible, involved in your children's lives, and and that's okay. This woman supports that, but she's got four children that are attached to you because of who you are. Oh well, oh well, this is my kid's mom, so. So I'm gonna be with right here. So you don't care about the four children that that you've gotten involved with? Because they they sense the difference when you're not around. They're not mine, so. So you don't care about them. It's okay. Nah. It's okay. You know, I, I I can't believe I know that's what you're saying right now in front of the cameras and all that, but I can't believe that that yeah, you're better than that. Come on, Raymond. You can be with whoever you want to be with, but why lie? That's what I want to know. That's, Why lie? That's what we want to understand. And if there's a reason, please let us know. Please tell us your story. I ain't got no story, man. That's how I'm going to be right there. You know, you know what? I've got a lot of pride in me. And this isn't the pride that I need. Thank you. Oh, uh, so she's the one. She's the one driving the truck now. Yeah, I'm the one huh? driving. She's the driving. Right. She's the one driving our truck. Yeah, right. You know what? We'll see about that in a little bit. We'll see about that. You'll be gonna be driving something else later too. Well, Anita, if you're Anita, if you're kicking him out, why are you taking him home? Watch out! Whoa! You almost wrecked your truck. Guys, watch out. She don't know what she's doing. How do you think you'll be able to move on from here? I'll be able to move on just from just okay. I'm, I'll do it. I can make it. I'll show my kids that we can do it. After the confrontation, Veronica chooses to permanently excise Raymond from her life. In a moment, Cheaters reveals if she follows through with her decision. But first, Cheaters welcomes Sarita Bronwyn. Sarita relives the desperation she suffered while confronting the man she loved cheaters. Sarita Bronwyn. In search of closure, Sarita returns to cheaters for a frank discussion on the merits of discovering infidelity. When we first arrived and I got out the van and I seen him sitting next to her, I tried to hold back everything I could, but I couldn't. I just want to run up and just hurt him because he hurt me and I just wanted him to feel the same way that I felt. And I, I just couldn't believe that it, this could happen to me. And it did. <laughs> yeah, it did. Come on, Rita. Come on, Rita. Now's your time. Devin, I'm Joey Grekowicz. It's this, man. What's up with these damn cameras up here? Matt, is that what you got going on over here, man? Who is this bitch, man? man. This bitch. You, yeah, bitch. Yeah. No, man. No, partner. Let me know something. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. Um, after everything went down, I went home by myself, and I thought about everything that happened, and I was like, I really don't need this. This is too much. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have to go through that. That's some things I shouldn't have to go through. Go Tell me something. What's go. really going on? No, no. What's really going on? No, we can talk about this no, now. We can talk about this, about this now. Uh, right now. Where we going together? Going together. We got this, we got this, we got this, going together. Oh, well, you should have thought about that. You should have thought about that. We can talk about it. You doing it now, so talk about it now. Well, actually, he called me. Well, actually, I called him, and he returned to my call. 
and um, we talked, we had a long talk. It was painful at first and then I'm like, I can't make him stay, can't make him do what he don't want to do. So I was like, it's time for me to move on. You know what I'm saying? Cause you, cause you're I, didn't playing. Know, I didn't know for sure if I was going to get back my baby mama or not. So she was you a know, safety valve. I'm not, I'm not questioning I mean, she that. left you once. What make you think she ain't going to do it again? She I ain't, ain't going no mother. Word. I'm not even talking to you. I'm not even talking to you. But I'm talking to you. But I ain't talking to you. But I ain't talking to you. But I ain't talking to you. Yeah, love is something I will always believe in, but I have to be, a, I'll be a little skeptical at first. Don't fall right off into it. Let time take its place. Responsibility of raising four children on her own and wishes her the best in the future. Mr. Garcia and Ms. Cipriano 